story time on how I sent my nudes to my dad. I'm talking full, clear tunnel vision to my cat child. Just know this story ends with me getting my behind beat. So I was 17 at the time and I had a boyfriend who was also 17 and we've been together for one year. We were in the same grade but we always had different classes so I usually seen him during lunch. My parents were super strict and religious so we had to keep our relationship on the low. So my boyfriend always asked me to send him nudes but I never had the guts to send it to him. One day over the phone me and my boyfriend had a heart to heart and he told me that he would never break my trust and that I can trust him with everything. So I decided I was going to surprise him for his birthday and send him the you know. The night before his birthday, I decided I was going to send him the nudes exactly at 12 a.m. Biggest mistake ever. Like for part two. Part two on how I sent my nudes to my dad. Like I said, I decided to surprise my boyfriend with the you know for his birthday. When the clock struck midnight was when exactly I was going to send the pictures and wish him a happy birthday. On my phone, my boyfriend's name was David with a red heart emoji. And my dad was under dad with the two pink heart emojis. Two very different contacts, but at the same time, way too close. I took the pictures with nothing on. I'm talking full birthday suit. I bent down in front of that mirror, legs wide open. And one in a bed with my selfie stick. I was literally so anxious that I didn't even realize what happened. When I went to go text my boyfriend, my dad texted me. I thought I just swiped up the message to get it out my way, but instead I hit the message. So once I hit the message, it switched me from texting my boyfriend to texting my dad. If you have an iPhone, you know exactly what I mean. But anyways, I didn't realize that I was texting my dad, so I went and sent the nudes. Once I found out, I literally wanted to die. Like for part three. Part three on how I sent my nudes to my dad. Like I said, I hit my dad's message by mistake and ended up sending the pictures to him. I still didn't realize I texted my dad, so I just threw my phone on the bed, anxiously waiting for my boyfriend's reply. 2.5 seconds later, my dad barges into the house and is literally screaming at the top of his lungs. I was actually confused until my dad said, why would you disrespect your body like that? Once I realized everything, it was already too late. I got the beating of my lifetime and my phone was taken away, but only for like a week because of safety purposes. When I went to school, I explained everything to my boyfriend and he was so shocked. He did say he appreciated even the attempt. I eventually took nudes directly on my boyfriend's phone and we're still currently together. But for the rest of my school year, I had to deal with even more strict parents. Watch you text guys. Story time on how I went down on my boyfriend and his hot dog smelled like hot trash. So I was dating this guy and we were both 17. Neither of us had our V card, so we weren't new to the game. But up until this point, we haven't done the nasty with each other. We always talked about it on the phone and eventually we decided we wanted to try to 6-9. 34, 13, five. So one day he was home alone and he told me to come over. So I did what us girls do. I freshened up down there and made sure my cat was bald. When I got there, things immediately got spicy. We got into position and there it was. Once I got close to his hot dog, that smell hit me so hard I didn't know what to do. He already started back there and I'm over here just trying not to throw up. All of a sudden, I just feel his hand on my head and he put my face down. Once I had a taste of that hot dog, I literally died. Like for part two. Part two on how I went down on my boyfriend and his hot dog smelled like hot trash. So like I said, once he put my head down and I got a taste of that hot dog, I literally died. I gonna be so mad at me, but y'all, I went through with it. I didn't want to hurt his feelings even though he was hurting my nose. I kind of hoped that this was like a one-time thing and that it wouldn't happen again. So I just gave him multiple chances. And each time it was just ill. I eventually got the courage and I just let him know like, hey, like your, your thing, it just, just it doesn't smell good. He got offended, blocked me, and never talked to me again. Like, dang, it's not my fault you don't take showers. I just couldn't do it, y'all. Hygiene is a deal breaker. I'm so traumatized, I still smell it now. But the lesson I learned, always be honest and let them know how you feel. And that goes for both men and women. Story time on how a black 15-year-old girl refused to give up her seat to a white woman. And no, this is not the story of Rosa Parks. It is the story of Claudette Colvin, and she actually gave up her seat nine months before Rosa Parks. Claudette lived in Montgomery, Alabama, where at the time they tried to keep black people in their place. But that didn't phase Miss Claudette. She was angered by the case of Jeremiah Reeves, an older classmate at Booker T. Washington High School who was indicted in 1952 and later executed for allegedly raping a white woman. Because of this, she went on to join the NAACP Youth Council and took to flaunting her natural hair in defiance of the pressure to have it straightened. 
On March 2nd of 1955, Claudette was riding the bus home from school when the driver ordered her and her classmates to vacate a row of seats to accommodate one white woman, but she refused. Like for part two. Part two on how a 15-year-old black girl refused to give up her seat to a white woman. So like I said, the bus driver ordered Claudette and her classmates to vacate a row of seats to accommodate one white woman. All three of her classmates got up, but Claudette did not budge. She refused and said she knew her constitutional rights. They responded by roughly yanking her off of the bus, handcuffing her, and placing her in a cell. Claudette cried and prayed until her mother and pastor came a few hours later to bail her out. Claudette caught the attention of local black leaders who helped her get legal representation that led to most of her charges getting dropped. The leaders wanted to use her as an example as justification for a citywide bus boycott, but they thought she was too young and emotional. When it was revealed that Claudette had been impregnated by an older man later that summer, it confirmed their sentiment. Like for part three. Part three on how a black 15 year old girl refused to give up her seat to a white woman. So like I said, once they found out that Claudette was pregnant by an older man, they said that she was the wrong person for the movement. The right person arrived nine months later when Rosa Parks, a 42 year old seamstress and NAACP secretary made headlines for her arrest on December 1st, prompting the launch of the Montgomery bus boycott the following day and the national rise of Dr. Martha Luther King Jr. With all that being said, Claudette sparked legal action that led to the end of Alabama's segregated bus laws and enabled a widespread civil rights movement to pick up steam. A big thanks to Miss Claudette Colvin. Story time on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister and I didn't even realize it. Okay, so boom, my mom and my dad had been together for 14 years up until this point. And my mom was actually pregnant with my soon-to-be little sister. My mom and my dad almost never argued. They had a pretty solid relationship, or so I thought. And my mom was very close to her twin sister for obvious reasons. I mean, they're twins. Well, one day when my parents was at work, I decided to skip school with my friends and go to the movie theaters instead. But I needed some money. So I was planning on going home to get money out of my mom's purse since she never noticed when I took anything. I assumed the house was empty because I was usually the first one home, then my mom, then my dad. Remember that because that's important for later on in the story. Y'all, I ran into the house and I went straight for my parents' room. I mean, I was loud. I didn't hear any moaning, y'all. Guess he was doing a bad job. But anyways, I opened that door and there it was. Like for part two. Part two on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister and I didn't even realize it. So like I said, I opened the door into the room and there it was. My dad and my mom's sister literally staring at me in shock. I closed that door so fast and ran to my room, I didn't even give him a chance to react. Y'all, I didn't even realize that wasn't my mom. Don't worry though, because I eventually did. Stick with me. But yeah, I was panicking on how I was going to explain why I skipped school and that I just walked in on them. I was waiting for them to come talk to me but they never did about four hours later my real mom came home and screamed that she got food for us now remember what i said i'm usually the first home then my mom then my dad so my mom only bought food for me and her assuming that her husband wasn't gonna be home till later so anyways i went downstairs and told my mom sorry about earlier she was confused and said what happened earlier and this is when it got real y'all life for part three Part three on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister, and I didn't even realize it. So like I said, I told my mom I'm sorry about what happened earlier, and she said, what happened earlier? Y'all, my stupid ass, I really thought that was my mom's way of trying to act like nothing ever happened. So I just laughed. But then I said, where's dad's food? Then my mom said, you know he doesn't come home from work till later, so the food will spoil by then. Y'all, at that very moment, it hit me. I realized that when I opened the door for that split second, I didn't see my mom have a pregnant belly. So out of nowhere, I made that, oh my gosh, I just realized something noise. You know that noise. It goes like this. <gasps> so my mom's still confused, asking, what's wrong? I said, mom, were you here earlier? She said, of course not, honey. I was at work the whole day. I screamed, oh my gosh, mom, dad is cheating on you with Lily. My mom immediately stopped eating. Like for part four. Part four on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister, and I didn't even realize it. So like I said, I screamed, oh my gosh, mom, dad is cheating on you with Lily. Then my mom immediately stopped eating. My mom looked at me so serious and said, what are you talking about? Then I explained 
everything to her. The anger my mom had is just something I can't explain. Let me remind you that my mom is pregnant and she's finding out that her husband is cheating on her with her twin sister while pregnant and she's finding out by her daughter. My dad was a dead man. Once he came home, his life fell apart. He cried and begged my mom not to leave him, but nope, she divorced him and took him for everything he got, might I add. My mom couldn't even look at her sister, so their relationship was never the same. And it doesn't help that my mom slept with her boyfriend a year later. My mom is petty. I still get to see my dad, but I always have that scene in the back of my head. But hey, I never got in trouble for ditching school, so it all worked out. <laughs> Story time on how my boyfriend married my mom and got her pregnant. It's giving stepdaddy. It's giving betrayal. Anyways, so boom, I was 17 at the time, my boyfriend was 20, and my mom was 35. So me and my boyfriend were together for two years, but it was very rocky because he couldn't keep his third leg in his pants. I would go to my mom for advice, but she was always on his side. You know that one family member or friend you go to for advice, and instead of hearing you out, they say, what did you do? Yeah, that was my mom. I would be like, hey mom, George cheated on me. Let's call him George. And she would say, well honey, what did you do to cause George to cheat on you? Like what? Anyways, one day I decided I no longer wanted to be treated like crap, so I left George, and I left George for good. But guess what? He was always still around because my mom would always invite him to dinners and movies, and that was just the beginning. Like for part two. Part two on how my boyfriend married my mom and got her pregnant. Yes, it was giving stepdaddy. So like I said, I broke up with my boyfriend because he was a serial cheater, but my mom was still inviting him over. I would tell my mom to stop, but she kept saying that he was family. I was so pissed at my mom that I literally always stayed in my room, and when he would come over, I would hear them downstairs watching movies and laughing. I thought it was weird, but I definitely didn't think they would have gotten married, let alone have my little sister. Well, two weeks after our breakup, yes, just two weeks, one night when my ex-boyfriend George was over, I all of a sudden didn't hear them downstairs watching a movie, but I did hear my mom's room door slam shut. Then I heard thumping and that wasn't about to happen on my watch I ran to open the door, but the door was locked So I started knocking my mom opened the door and I seen her hair in shambles and my ex on her bed Like for part three part three on how my boyfriend married my mom and got her pregnant. Yes. Yes Stepdaddy we get it. So like I said, I heard thumping in my mom room So I ran and opened the door, but it was locked so I knocked she opened the door and her hair was in shambles with my ex on her bed. And might I add, he was naked. I cried and said, how could you do this to me? Do you know what this lady said? She said, well, sweetie, I understand him. You guys weren't compatible. And we're getting married Sunday, so this is something you're going to have to get used to. I attacked my mom, fought her, beat her actually. And I moved in with my dad, who was disgusted by her. I bet you guys are hoping she didn't actually marry him. Well, she did. And she ended up pregnant. I had the last laugh. Because fast forward a year later and my mom is crying in tears. And y'all wouldn't believe why. The story gets crazier. Life for part four. Part four on how my ex married my mom and got her pregnant. He graduated to stepdaddy, but not for long. So like I said, fast forward a year later, I had the last laugh because here is my mom crying her eyes out. Why you may ask? Oh yeah, he was cheating a lot. And with younger girls. He even tried to get back with me. I laughed at my mom and said, oh, I thought you understood him, hmm? You must be doing something to make him cheat. Karma's a bee. And my mom was pregnant with a girl, but unfortunately she had a miscarriage. Rest in peace to my sister. That's the only part I'm actually sad about. She ended up divorcing my ex and now she's left with nothing. No husband, two failed marriages, no relationship with your daughter. And don't feel bad for her guys. She went for her sister's man next. But that's a whole nother story. Story time on how I caught the deacon sleeping with the altar boy in the same room as me. Okay, so boom, I have a religious family that goes to church every Sunday. My parents would always volunteer me to help around in church, so half of my life I lived at church. The deacon of the church was 48, and the altar boy, who was also my friend, was 12. Now, this story gets straight to the point. There's not really any backstory. There was nothing suspicious at all. The deacon and the altar boy barely spoke to each other. Like, literally, no one in church or anyone around the church who helped suspected anything well one day my pastor asked me to fold a hundred linens 
It was for a church party that was happening. He set me up in one of the rooms that were barely used and told me he was going to send somebody to help. 20 minutes in, I got cold since I was sitting under the vent, so I moved to the corner of the room. The corner I moved to, you barely can see me because I was covered by benches. 10 minutes after I moved, the deacon and the altar boy walks into the room, locks the door, and starts making out, and it doesn't stop there. Like for part two. Part two on how I caught the deacon sleeping with the altar boy in the same room as me. So like I said, I was in a corner peacefully folding my linen until the deacon and the altar boy walks in. They didn't see me and they start making out. All of a sudden, pants are being taken off, booties are being grabbed, and people are being bent over. And if you're asking if they, you know, yeah, yeah, they did. And I watched the whole thing in shock. By this point, I already dropped to the floor and I was just hiding. 10 minutes, yes, 10 minutes when they were finally done, they walked out. I told my parents as soon as I got home and y'all wouldn't believe the response. They literally said that that church was filled with powerful people and they didn't want to involve themselves in it. So they told me not to tell a soul. My parents took me left and we never looked back, never went back to that church again. So this is kind of like a deep, dark family secret. But hey, now you guys know. <laughs> Story time on how I was almost kidnapped. Okay, you guys, so today's story is my own. Let's get into it. Okay, so boom. I was in the ninth grade when this happened, and my brother was in the 12th. We always took a bus to the bus stop that was five minutes away from our house, and we walked the rest of the way home. I had super strict parents, so I didn't have a cell phone. This detail comes into play later on. So on this particular day, our routine changed. My brother had to complete some community service hours, so we were going to separate. I was going to go home, and my brother was going to go the opposite direction to the daycare that was was also five minutes away from the bus stop the bus dropped us off and before my brother walked away he told me to be careful and i was like yeah yeah thinking this was going to be a regular walk home but i was definitely wrong about that about three minutes into me walking when my brother was no longer in sight a car slowly pulls up next to me and puts his window down like for part two part two on how i was almost kidnapped Okay, so I'm walking home alone and my brother is no longer in sight and the streets are kind of empty. A car slowly pulls up next to me and a guy puts his window down. A man who looks like he's in his 40s yells out, Hello, beautiful. I kept walking and ignoring him and he got louder and now he's following me in the same pace as I'm walking with his car. Hey, what's your name? That's what he yelled, but he said it so loud that it scared me and I started walking even faster. He drives up next to me again and leans over to the passenger seat to try to open the door and told me to get in. At this point, I'm jogging. So he parked his car and started jogging right after me. I full blown started running and guess what he did? He went back into his car and started driving to me. At this point, I'm 30 seconds away from my house and I don't want to go there so he knows where I live. So I go to the gas station and he follows me like for part three. Part three on how I was almost kidnapped. So like I said, I started running and he got back into his car and I was 30 seconds away from my house. So I didn't want him to know where I lived. So I ran to the gas station and he followed me. So now I'm in the gas station acting like I'm buying something. And this guy literally parked his car and walks inside and comes right up to me. He then says, hello, beautiful. What's your name? I don't know why I answered. I just was scared. So I said my name was Victoria, which is not. It's Valerie. But I said Victoria. Then he grabs my arm and says victoria you're coming home with me tonight he starts to squeeze my arm and grips it really tight y'all i was so scared i don't even know why i didn't scream i was just like in fear but i'll be damned if this man was gonna take me home he whispered in my ear to walk to the car and at that moment i screamed to the cashier like for part four part four on how i was almost kidnapped so like I said, he told me to walk to the car and at that moment, I screamed to the cashier. He's squeezing my hand and he's trying to take me. All the cashier did was look up and said, what's going on? And that man ran to his car. I'm talking about bolted. He was gone. Flash. I stayed with the gas station lady for about 30 minutes after that because I was so scared to walk home. And then eventually a nurse that was also in the gas station who was waiting with me walked me home. I'm still grateful for that nurse to this day. Thankfully, that was a gas station that was close to our house and my family always went there so they knew all of us. The gas station lady told my family what happened and they got me a phone the very next day. And now my brother always walked me home first before going to go do his community service hours. It's crazy because that was the very first time I walked home alone and something happened. Even if you think you're good, be careful because you never can know what happens. Be safe out there, guys. Story time on how on Valentine's Day, I found out my fiance was cheating on me with my best friend and that I was actually the side fiance. Y'all ever heard of a side fiance? Yeah, me either. 
Okay, so boom. Me and my fiance were high school sweethearts and been together since the 11th grade. We'll call my fiance Snake. We met through my best friend and let's call her Hoey. I mean, Chloe. They were actually best friends before I met either of them. I met Chloe in high school and one day when we were hanging out, she invited Snake. Me and Snake immediately clicked and started dating a couple months after that and been together since. Chloe was super supportive of our relationship, but they still hung out without me. At first, I had a problem with it, but they convinced me to like trust them and that they were best friends before me. So I did. So after we started dating, he proposed to me two years later. Chloe was happy and supportive and she was going to be my maid of honor. Well, that was a big mistake. Now that we're up to speed, let's get into it. Like for part two. Part two on how I found out on Valentine's Day, my fiance cheated on me with my best friend and that I was actually the side fiance. So like I said, now that we're up to speed with the background information, let's fast forward to when now me and Snake are engaged and set to tie the knot on May 2nd. We're in the month of February and we all know Valentine's Day is on February. This may sound weird, but he actually would get Valentine's gifts for me and my best friend. And I thought nothing was wrong with it. I honestly don't know how I didn't see all these signs, but anyways, this particular Valentine's Day, my fiance was going to be out of town, so I made plans with Hoey, I mean Chloe. But in actuality, Chloe was just setting me up. She told me she rented out a hotel and that we could just Netflix and chill, drink wine, eat food, and just celebrate love. I got all cute and told Hoey, I mean Chloe, that I was on my way. She told me she left the door cracked open and to just come in. I forgot to say my fiance's name is Snake and best friend is Chloe. Anyways, you wouldn't believe what I walked into. My heart broke, life for part three. Part three on how on Valentine's Day I found out my fiance was cheating on me with my best friend and that I was actually the side fiance. Anyone ever heard of a side fiance? Yeah, me either. So anyways, like I said, my best friend Hoey Chloe told me to just walk into the hotel room. So I did. And of course, I started hearing moaning. I seen rose petals leading up to the bed. And when I looked up, I see my fiance literally pounding my best friend with her legs wide open. My jaws dropped. My fiance jumped. I screamed. And my fiance snake is just frozen like he just seen a ghost. Y'all wouldn't believe what happened next. Chloe gets up and puts a robe on and says it's time to tell her. I'm in tears and my fiance just says, I'm sorry, baby. Then Chloe drops the ball and says that they've been sleeping with each other for the past year and that they're getting married. And then she shows me her engagement ring. My heart shattered to a million pieces. Like for part four. Part four on how on Valentine's Day, I found out my fiance was cheating on me with my best friend and that I was actually the side fiance. Yes, a side fiance. So like I said, my best friend Hoey Chloe said that they've been sleeping together for one year and that they're going to get married. My fiance Snake said it kind of just happened and that he didn't want to tell me this way. I cried saying, how could the both of you do this to me? The betrayal of two people you love doing this to you was just deep. What's so messed up is that when I told her I was on my way, that's when she decided to sleep with him so I could literally walk into it. I left and cried my eyes out. My friendship with Chloe was obviously over and my engagement to Snake was called off. It was so embarrassing to tell my family. The marriage with Chloe and Snake didn't last long. They actually divorced two years later, but they did have a kid together. I received a letter from Snake basically apologizing and said how he feels shitty about the whole thing. Chloe, on the other hand, she was very cold. She actually never reached out to me. It took a while to let love back in, but after therapy and finding the love of my life, I healed and I'm doing great. Happy Valentine's Day. Story time on how I caught my mom sleeping with her sister's husband, her brother-in-law. And this is a continuation of the story time where my mom married my boyfriend. Okay, so boom. After my mom divorced my boyfriend for treating her horribly, trying to get back with me and cheating on her religiously, my mom got very depressed because me or my dad was not talking to her. The only person that was there for her was her sister, which is my aunt. My auntie had the biggest heart in the world. She was very forgiving. So even after my mom did what she did, my auntie still tried to play peacemaker. She tried to make me and my mom squash everything, but that wasn't about to happen because my mom slept, got pregnant, and married my boyfriend. I'm not forgiving anything. So because my mom was so sad and lonely, my auntie was going over there a lot more than usual just to be her support system. So of course, because my auntie was spending so much time there, her husband ended up helping my mom a lot too. And that was a big mistake. Like for part two. 
part two on how I caught my mom sleeping with her sister's husband, her brother-in-law. And this is a continuation of the story time where my mom slept with my boyfriend. So like I said, my auntie had a big heart and was spending a lot of time with my mom because my mom had no one else. And since my auntie was spending a lot of time there, so was her husband. But there were times where my auntie couldn't see my mom because she was at work. So she sent her husband to just do a quick checkup and give her some of the food that my auntie cooked. For some reason, my auntie still trusted my mom, which is her little sister. I don't know why, but she did. Well, one day while my auntie was at work, my mom called her saying she was having a breakdown. So my auntie sent her husband to check on her and give her some food. But in actuality, what was really happening is that when my auntie went to work, my mom would call and fake like she's having a breakdown and she needs help just so my auntie would send her husband to the rescue and so that it wouldn't look suspicious while he was there. Well, their little sick plan didn't work this time, like for part three. Part three on how I caught my mom sleeping with her sister's husband, her brother-in-law. And this is a continuation of the story time where my mom slept with my boyfriend. Like I said, my mom called my auntie acting like she was having a nervous breakdown. So my auntie sent her husband to check on her. But what they didn't know is that my auntie called me. My auntie basically called me because she really felt bad for my mom. She kept telling me to go check on her to make sure she's okay because she's going through a lot right now. She says she know what my mom did was wrong, but that I only have one mom. And if God forbid something happened, I wouldn't regret not talking to my mom so i said fine i told my dad to drop me over to my mom's house when i go over there i used the keys that i still had and then i looked all of downstairs no one was downstairs so i went upstairs as soon as i got upstairs i heard moaning so i did what anybody would do i immediately got suspicious and pulled out my phone to start recording i slowly made it over to my mom's room and opened the door and there it was like for part four Part four on how I caught my mom sleeping with her sister's husband, her brother-in-law. And this is a continuation of the story time where my mom married my boyfriend. So like I said, I pulled out my phone and started recording and I walked over to my mom's room. I opened the door and there it was. My mom was fully naked on the bed. And my auntie's husband belt was unbuckled and his shirt was unbuttoned. He was on top of her kissing her, then jumped off and fell to the floor. He immediately yells, it's not what it looks like. And I said, oh, shut up. I'm recording everything. The funny part is I wasn't even shocked. When I told him my dad was downstairs, he bolted out the room, ran to his car, and he left. I called my mom a stupid fuck. It wasn't kind words. And she was just there bawling her eyes out. I immediately sent the video to my auntie. And even though my auntie's husband said they never actually did the nasty because I stopped it before it happened, my auntie didn't care and divorced him because, like, he still tried. And my mom was left with nothing and no one except her three cats. As she deserves. Story time on how my mom threw hot boiling water at my dad. Okay, so boom. My parents been together for 15 years at this point and I was only 14. My parents were only dating for a couple of months and then my mom got pregnant with me. So they ended up getting married soon after. The only problem with that is my mom never really got to know my real dad. He had anger issues. And I'm talking real anger issues. And he refused to go to therapy. Oh, well, I'm sure you guys guessed it. My dad was putting his hands on my mom. And I mean beating her for dumb reasons. And every time I tried to stop it... My dad would literally turn around and beat me too you would think he would stop for his daughter but because he would beat me so bad my mom always told me to stay out of it well one day my mom was cooking and she was boiling some water my dad came home and seen that she was cooking and got angry he said that his food should be ready before he gets home my mom just stayed quiet and he went to go hit her but this day my mom was tired of it so something changed like for part two Part two on how my mom threw hot boiling water at my dad. So like I said, once my dad got home, he was super angry. He told my mom that his food should have been ready already, even though my mom was literally cooking it. So he went to beat her. But my mom was sick of it. But as he went to hit her, my mom just took the boiling water and threw it at his face. My dad screamed, ran upstairs, and went into the bathroom. My mom took me, took the keys, ran to the car, and we drove to her sister's house. My mom was hysterical. No one in our family knew what was going on in our household. So we had to explain everything to everyone. We called the cops on my dad, and now he's in jail. But I did ask my mom what changed this time. And she said she couldn't stand there anymore, but not because of her, but because of me. She didn't want me to grow up thinking this was okay and that this how men treat their women and she definitely didn't want him to lay one more finger on me ever again so she had to build up the courage for herself and for me both and i will always be super proud of my mom story time on how my dad found out i had an only fans and was using it to batter his dough Okay, so boom, I was 18 at the time I started doing my OnlyFans. My OnlyFans was doing good, so I was able to move out and get my own spot. 
My dad was single and he lived alone, so I always came over to visit him every now and then. I never told my dad I did OnlyFans, and when he would ask me what my job was, I would just say I work from home, doing like customer service. Well, I was servicing the customers, all right. And little did I know he was one of them. Well, one day I went to go visit my dad and he was in his room watching some TV. He told me his computer wasn't working and if I could take a look at it and fix it for him. You know, typical things that parents usually ask their kids for. So I go over to the computer to take a look at it and see what's going on. Child, little did I know once I fixed that computer, I was going to be in for a rude awakening. Like for part two. Part two on how my dad found out I had an OnlyFans and was using it to batter his dough. So like I said, I went to go visit my dad and he asked me to take a look at the computer because it wasn't working. Now, when I went over to the computer, once I took a look at everything, I found out what the issue was pretty quickly. The ethernet cable wasn't plugged all the way in, so the internet wasn't working. I plugged it back in and everything was fine. Once I refreshed everything, I know that Google restore option. Yeah, that popped up and I was like, let me restore everything for him. Thinking that he was going to be happy that everything was still safe. Well, once I restored everything, six tabs opened up and OnlyFans was one of them. I was shocked that he even had an OnlyFans account. So I clicked on the tab and I signed in. I know, I know, y'all probably like, why? But I mean, I mean, I was nosy. I mean, y'all telling me I wouldn't be either. He was signed into his account, so I started looking through it. All of a sudden, my heart dropped. There was my OnlyFans and he had exclusive content. Like for part three. Part three on how my dad found out I had an OnlyFans and was using it to batter his dough. So like I said, he was signed into his OnlyFans, so I started looking through it. And I found out that he was subscribed to me for a whole year. He had the year subscription. Do you hear me? He was one of the customers that were getting exclusive content. He was seeing... <laughs> everything and i know y'all must be asking why would he watch his daughter to you know batter his dough well he kind of doesn't know it's me so my only fans is anonymous like this story i wear a bejeweled ski mask in all my pictures and videos and my name is obviously fake my dad is watching me and i mean all of me but he doesn't know it's me so i closed it and told him everything was fixed but i had to go home told him that i forgot to meet up with a friend so he said okay thanks drive safe sweetie i cringed went home had a nervous breakdown and learned how to block him and now I have to live the rest of my life knowing my dad used my content for battering. <laughs> Story time on how I went on a Tinder date and my date tried to kill me. This story gets straight to the point, so let's get into it. Okay, so boom, I was 16 years old and I was lonely. All my friends had boyfriends, so I was always left out. But I didn't like anyone from school, so I went crazy on Tinder. Me and this guy both swiped, so we started talking. And after two weeks, he asked to meet up and go on a date. Two weeks was a little fast, but again, I was lonely and I really wanted a stupid boyfriend. Don't be like me, y'all. But so yeah, I went on the date and we met at a restaurant and you guessed it he was catfish his picture he was a tall muscular guy 6'3 with rico suave hair but in person he was bald fat and he was short i was so pissed i just wanted to turn around and leave but he stood up to greet me so i didn't want to be rude so i just told myself i'll get a free meal y'all during the day i found out he was 40 like for part two Part two on how I went on a Tinder date and my date tried to kill me. Okay, so boom, like I said, I found out he was 40 and he was catfished. I had to get out of there. After dinner, I told him it was nice meeting him and that I was gonna text him once I got home. But of course, I was just gonna block him. But that's none of his business. Anyways, he asked me if I wanted him to walk me to my car. But I said, no, that's fine. At this point, I was being very standoffish because it was like, dude, get away from me. And I think he noticed. It was pretty late at night, probably like 10 p.m., so... When we left the restaurant, no one was really around. At this point, I'm kind of getting a little scared, so I kind of walked to my car a little quickly, about to open my door. And this guy comes out of nowhere, right behind me, and covers me with his arms and squeezes me. He covers my mouth so I wouldn't scream, and he whispered in my ear saying I was leaving with him whether I liked it or not. I tried to wiggle myself out, but I couldn't. He was too strong. And things got real. Like for part three. Part two on how I went on a Tinder date and my date tried to kill me. Okay, so boom, like I said, I found out he was 40 and he was catfished. I had to get out of there. After dinner, I told him it was nice meeting him and that I was gonna text him once I got home. But of course, I was just gonna block him. But that's none of his business. Anyways, he asked me if I wanted him to walk me to my car. But I said, no, that's fine. At this point, I was being very standoffish because it was like, dude, get away from me. And I think he noticed. It was pretty late at night, probably like 10 p.m. So 
when we left the restaurant no one was really around at this point i'm kind of getting a little scared so i kind of walked to my car a little quickly about to open my door and this guy comes out of nowhere right behind me and covers me with his arms and squeezes me he covers my mouth so i wouldn't scream and he whispered in my ear saying i was leaving with him whether i liked it or not i tried to wiggle myself out but i couldn't he was too strong and things got real like for part three part three on how i went on a tinder date and my date tried to kill me okay so boom like i said he comes up behind me and squeezes me with his arms and covers my mouth so i wouldn't scream i tried to wiggle my way out but i couldn't he was too strong but since his arms was around my upper body and my mouth my hand where i was holding the keys was free but my other arm was being squeezed by him thank god all i needed was that one arm and thank god i had pepper spray attached to my keys so i took my pepper spray sprayed him in his eyes and he screamed he he let me go and that's when i took my purse to reach for my taser and yes i tased him mama ain't raised no fool i ran to my car opened the door and got home immediately by the time i pulled out the parking lot he was still on the floor i got home and told my parents everything they called the cops to the restaurant he was gone by the time they got there i just thank god he didn't know anything about me not my home not my school or personal life all he knew was my first name so if you're dating online be careful story time on how my mom caught me in the shower with my sister okay so boom i was my mom's own only child and her and my dad been divorced for like five years at this point my mom finally found a guy that she likes and they've been dating for about a year they decided to take things serious so me and my mom moved into his house now my mom and this guy wasn't married but it pretty much felt like it and we all acted like they were so i would call him stepdad and all that good stuff and he also had a daughter that's where my sister comes in now i was 17 and she was also 17 and our birthdays landed on the same day we were literally so compatible it was amazing they enrolled us in the same school and we just became inseparable now me and my sister uh there was some tension between us if you know what i mean one day we were home alone and she came into my room and woo, child like for part two part three on how my mom caught me in the shower with my sister okay so boom like i said because the door was closed and the shower was running i didn't hear when my mom got home but when i finally did hear her it was too late because she was already opening the door that my sister forgot to lock my mom opens the door and see me and my sister through the shower curtains my mom literally lost it she didn't see us kissing or anything but it was just like why are we in the shower together and that's exactly what she screamed why are you guys in the shower together me and my sister came up with some bullshit excuse talking about some oh yeah we do this all the time when we play sports all the girls shower together it's normal it's nothing it's literally nothing and y'all for some reason my mom was buying it excuse me she actually bought it <laughs> she was like okay but not over here girls that's just weird so i was like oh okay mom yeah like we won't do it here it's fine my mom left i left then my sister stayed in the shower and we never talked about it again now me and my sister they so we're talking about how my parents sold me to my uncle okay so boom let's get straight into it ever since i was a kid everyone would compliment me on how beautiful i was literally got complimented everywhere me and my family went and i'm not trying to toot my own horn here it's important my parents didn't see me as their beautiful child my parents seen me as dollar signs I was literally up for sale and my parents were bidding on who would pay the most to marry me. My mom started teaching me how to cook and clean and how to keep a man happy. One day while my mom was getting me ready and all dolled up for dinner, I told my mom I didn't want to marry anyone and she flat out told me I didn't have a choice. Well, little did I know that exact night my mom and I was having this conversation, my uncle was downstairs waiting on me. Like for part two. Part two on how my parents sold me to my uncle. Okay, so boom, like I said, my mom was getting me all dolled up for dinner and my uncle was downstairs waiting on me. I didn't know this at the time, of course. My mom and I go downstairs and I hear my dad say, there she is, isn't she beautiful? Then I looked at a man who just smiled and said, I like it. I asked my mom who was that guy and she told me, shh, that's your father's brother, sweetie, no more talking. So we all sat down and had dinner and my uncle was just staring at me, smiling at me and looking at me up and down. He was literally studying me. My dad even looked at him for validation. I was so confused. A little did I know this wasn't just a dinner. It was a tryout, an audition, if you will. If I would be good enough for my uncle. He was actually rich and looking for a wife and my dad was trying to sell me to him. Running out of time, like for part three. Part three on how my parents sold me to my uncle. So like I said, we were having dinner and my dad was trying to sell me to my rich uncle. He was literally pitching a sale. 
She's beautiful, she cooks, she cleans, and she's very smart. And oh, she still has her V card. It was at that moment it hit me. I figured out what was going on. When my uncle left, my parents told me good job for being a good girl. I cried and told my parents I did not want to marry that man. I was 15 and he was like 40. But my parents told me I was going to marry him and I was going to like it. I'll fast forward a year later and they definitely sold me. And I lost my V card to my uncle on our wedding night. I hated it at first, but I kind of fell in love with him. And it didn't hurt that he was rich and I kind of lived stress-free. So yeah, my parents sold me and that sucks. But I ended up being okay with it. Lucky. And we all laugh about it now. Yeah, I know it's toxic and corrupt, but this is why it's an anonymous story. <laughs> Story time on how I slept with a ghost that haunted my house. And no, I'm not crazy. Okay, so boom. I live in a haunted house with my parents and my little brother. I'm 16 and we've been dealing with this haunting for the past 8 years. My parents tried to move houses but they followed us and continued to haunt my family. I would wake up to doors being wide open, things around the house being moved, and my mom even said one of these ghosts pushed her while she was opening the fridge. My little brother is so scared he sleeps with my parents every night. Let's just say lots of crazy weird things was happening. Well, one night, one of these ghosts got in my bed. I woke up and felt a presence right next to me. That presence was all up in my grill. Then it disappeared. And this started happening every night and I kind of started expecting it. Well, one night something changed and the ghost had different plans. Like for part two. Part two on how I slept with a ghost that haunted my house. Okay, so boom, like I said, this night the ghost had different plans for me. I felt my sheets slightly slip down and pressure on my body. The pressure made my body feel so heavy and then I started feeling some things. And by the time those things was over, I just realized I did the nasty with a ghost. Y'all gotta work with me. TikTok won't let me explain those things. Anyways, I told my parents and they were not having it. They paid big money to fly someone in and have them blessed and clear the home from any hauntings. We tried this before, but it didn't work. My parents just finally went with the big guns and hired the expensive guy. Because at this point, things were going too far. So far, it looks like it worked because none of us felt any hauntings or presence from then. But since I'm now disturbed and violated by a ghost, I'm in therapy. And some people just call me crazy. But trust me, I know what went down. I felt it. Story time on how the guy I was dating lied about his age to get with me. Okay, y'all, so today's story is my own. Okay, so boom, this took place on my senior year of high school when I was 17. In my school, everyone had to complete 100 hours of community service to graduate. I ended up doing community service at a daycare that was literally right next to my house. I was working with a lot of kids, and they literally all loved me. I got many crazy stories about the time I was working at this daycare, y'all. Sheesh. But anyways, there was this one particular kid who was real quiet but super sweet. The teacher asked me to give him some one-on-one -on -one attention because he was a little behind. Everything went great and I could see he had potential, so my teacher wanted to introduce me to his parents. He told me his mom usually picks him up, so I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Well, a guy ended up picking him up and he looked kind of young, like my age, and he was 6'2", and ooh, height, y'all, that's my weakness. And of course, very handsome. As soon as he looked at me, he gave me a, ooh, you a snack look. I was so nervous, y'all, like for part two. Part two on how the guy I was dating lied about his age to get with me. Okay, so boom, like I said, I seen a tall, handsome guy walk up and I got a little nervous. But whatever, I started talking to him about his son and he just smiled the whole time and gave me the look. This is how he was looking at me, y'all. Like, please, if you're not ready for no action, don't give me that look. So I told him, your son is amazing and he's so sweet. And do you know what this guy told me? He told me, oh, I'm not his dad, I'm big bro. And I believed him. From that day forward, he was always coming to pick up his little brother. And we would always like flirt and stuff. Well, one day I was in the playground playing with the kids, waiting for all the parents to come pick up their children. I was sitting on a swing just like reading a book and he came and sat next to me. This was the first time we were both kind of alone, like literally no teachers around because I was the only one watching the kids play. And this is the moment he asked me for my number. Y'all, we started talking and texting every night. This is when things got spicy, like for part three. Part three on how the guy I was dating lied about his age to get with me. Okay, so boom, like I said, this was the first time we were finally alone and this is when he asked me for my number. He 
knew what he was doing. He was playing his cards right, y'all, when I think about it. But anyways, from then on, we started texting and talking every night. This went on for like a good two weeks, y'all. I'm talking about I was sleeping on the phone with this man. Still thinking that that was his little brother. He asked me how old I was, and I told him that I was 17, and then I asked him how old he was. This man told me he was 20. And then he told me that he already knew I was 17 because he asked one of the teachers already, but he wanted to make sure. So y'all, he literally knew the whole time that I was 17. Anyways, the truth was about to set his ass free. He asked me out on a date and I was like, hell yeah. So we planned a date for next Saturday. Well, Wednesday, a couple days before our date, I literally found out everything. Like for part four. Part four on how the guy I was dating lied about his age to get with me. And this story is my own. Okay, so boom, like I said, we had a date planned for Saturday, but Wednesday, the truth was revealed. The teacher was like, damn, Leo's mom hasn't been here in a while. She used to always pick him up, but now I'm always seeing the dad pick him up. I wonder what's going on. And I was like, huh, dad, what, huh? I said, that's not Leo's dad, that, that's his brother. And then she looked at me confused and was like, no, that's his father. And I just stared at her like, what? And I said, how old is he? She was like, 32. Y'all, my jaws dropped. He was actually single, though. They were co-parenting. But he started picking up his son more, literally because of me. I had the audacity to call him his little brother. From that day, I blocked him on everything and started hiding from him every time he came. So he thought I didn't work there anymore. He even asked about me. All the teachers had my back. <laughs> then eventually, he stopped coming, and the mom started picking up Leo. Thank God I didn't do nothing with him. These guys are weird. Story time on how my dad cheated on my mom with my boyfriend. And she was the one to walk in on them. Okay, so boom. My parents were happily married and been together for 20 years. My mom and my dad were both 48 years old and I was 16. Now my boyfriend, who my parents loved and treated like their own, was also 16. My boyfriend was a little feminine, but nothing crazy. There was a couple rumors in school of him being gay, but there was never any proof and he always denied it. A weird dynamic in me and my boyfriend's relationship is that he never really wanted to get freaky with me. I had to practically beg him to make out with me. And at times when we were doing the nasty, sometimes his hot dog would, uh... I became kind of insecure, but he just told me that he was one of those guys that weren't affectionate. And the way he would console me and embrace me, I believed him and thought it was normal. Other than that, our relationship was pretty peaceful. Well, him and my dad's relationship was always weird. And you, me, and my mom, we're about to find out why. Like for part two. Part two on how my dad cheated on my mom with my boyfriend and she was the one to walk in on them. Okay, so boom, like I said, my dad and my boyfriend's relationship was always weird. My boyfriend would come over my house like every day and spend time with me and my dad. Not so much my mom because my mom worked the night shift. He would usually get to know my mom on her off days, which was Saturday and Sundays. So over the year that my boyfriend's been coming over, my boyfriend would always end up in my dad's room. My boyfriend would tell me that he's gonna go over to my dad's room and play xbox with him i tried going in the room sometimes just to watch them play but they both convinced me that it was a guy's thing and that it was a bonding moment like a father and son type of thing so i would always just do my own thing in my room and wait for my boyfriend to come back well one monday night when my mom is supposed to be working she actually wasn't feeling good so she came back home i myself didn't even know my mom came back so i know for a fact that my dad and my brother didn't hear either all of a sudden i heard my mom open their room door and scream oh my god and i immediately ran out my room like for part three Part three on how my dad cheated on my mom with my boyfriend. And she was the one who walked in on them. Okay, so boom, like I said, my mom opened the door and screamed, Oh my God! I immediately ran out my room and went to my mom and stood right next to her. Me and my mom stood there in shock while we looked at my dad's hot dog in my boyfriend's peach. All four of us was literally frozen in place. My mom's reaction is actually something you wouldn't expect. She didn't fight or anything. She just closed the door, told me to go to my room, called the cops on my dad, because obviously my boyfriend is a minor. Police came, took my dad, brought him to jail, and my mom divorced him. No kicking, no fighting, no none of that. Not even any screaming. I'm not gonna lie, I told everyone in my school. It got so bad for my boyfriend, he had to actually change schools. And his parents are currently taking my dad to court. Now, me and my mom literally both don't speak to my dad. And yeah, me and my mom bonded. Because we were both literally cheated on with each other's significant others. So if your boyfriend says he's gonna play games with your dad ask him what type of games story time on how my brother got me pregnant we jump it right into it okay so boom i came out to my parents and told them i was gay my parents were not having it and they were pissed 
parents were actually so mad they kicked me out so after my parents kicked me out my brother told me he would let me back in the house if i did the nasty with him i know i know sounds crazy why would i do that but i was young at the time and i was dumb i was young and dumb so i agreed and i did the nasty with my brother so i was living in my parents house in secret and hiding every time they would be around it worked at first but i was always nauseous and throwing up so they eventually found out that i was still in the house my mom realized i was having pregnancy symptoms and said to me oh you're not gay imagine your parents being so happy that you're pregnant instead of gay <laughs> but wait till they find out who the father is like for part two part two on how my brother got me pregnant okay so boom like i said my mom realized i was having pregnancy symptoms and said oh you're not gay i was so confused but when i took the pregnancy test i tested positive and realized that i was pregnant i immediately knew the father was my brother because i lost my v card to my brother and he's literally the only person i've ever done the nasty with and when i told my brother he was happy like happy as fuck apparently my brother always liked me so getting me pregnant was a great news for him even though i'm his little sister yuck i ended up cussing my brother out we fought and like i literally violated him y'all like i said some not so kind words to that man obviously once my parents found out it was over for me i ran away and left and became a stripper then i eventually found an amazing man who i married and now i'm 29 with two beautiful kind daughters bye story time on how i had to beat my best friend and my boyfriend's ass okay so boom me and my best friend have been friends for eight years years later when i met my boyfriend and we started dating my best friend was always weirdly jealous i didn't think much of it because i thought we were best friends and she would never do something like that to me you know or so i thought well one day me and my best friend were shopping and she got a text she then tells me she has to go and just leaves i didn't even have a chance to tell her bye so i call my boyfriend and i say hey where are you then i hear the door closed and a girl's voice in the background i asked him what was that who who is that and he had the audacity to say that was his mom so i got to his house and talked to his mom and she said he wasn't there then his mom tells me he went to a hotel room she told me the info and i went there and guess what i found out like part two on how i had to beat my best friend and my boyfriend's ass okay so boom like i said his mom tells me he's in a hotel room and gives me the info so i go over there i needed to investigate so i got there and when i approached the room i heard moaning my heart dropped and i immediately started knocking on the door but i didn't say it was me i start to get so nervous thinking about what's going on in there then my boyfriend answers the door with his robe on and i immediately pushed him to the side to find my best friend naked on the bed that's when i ended up beating their asses i was actually beating them up so bad that a random girl in the hallway had to come in and stop the fight y'all know how the typical boy begging to come back and the best friend hating thing yeah i was good off of that good riddance i'm glad i taught them a lesson story time on how my cousin tried to sexually assault me okay y'all so boom i went to mexico for the summer because my parents wanted me to meet my grandparents i went there with my brother so i wasn't alone and throughout our time there me and my brother met my grandparents and other people in our family a month into my visit i met my cousin josh that's not his real name but we'll just call him josh when i first met him josh was super nice to both me and my brother everything was fine and he even stayed with us a couple weeks until something happened one day when i was in my room that i was staying at i was just minding my business playing minecraft now my room had no doors because they were working on getting new doors and let me tell you guys that i was eight years old and he was a teenager he came in my room and i didn't think anything of it he was just basically watching me play minecraft but then he came up to me and sat on my bed and then got on top of me like for part two part two on how my cousin tried to sexually assault me okay so boom like i said he came into my room and started watching me play minecraft but then he came to my bed and got on top of me i was laying down on my stomach so to give you a visual he was basically on my back like my butt then he tried to pull my shorts down and told me i'll let you keep playing minecraft if you let me touch your ass let me remind you guys that i'm eight years old and this guy's a teenager i didn't really understand what was going on but i just pushed him off and said i don't really want to play anymore then i threw the phone and i left 
It felt weird after, but I didn't know why. Him going and laying on me and touching on me like that, I was just uncomfortable. And I know things could have gotten bad and even worse if there were doors. I kept this in for two years, so I think it's time to tell everyone now. Remember, it's never okay for anybody to take advantage or inappropriately touch you. They story time on how me and my mom walked in on my sister sleeping with my stepdad okay so boom this was back in 2017 so i was 17 and my sister was 20 and my stepdad was 32 so when i was 16 my sister and i were introduced by my mom to my stepdad and right off the bat my sister was very flirty with him i would always catch them doing things like my sister rubbing my stepdad's muscles and him just standing there loving it i would try to tell my mom but she would always tell me that they're just getting along and that they're basically father and daughter anyways this day it was my birthday and me and my mom were gonna have a girl's day so that meant that my sister and my stepdad were going to be all alone my mom and i told them that we would be back around 10 so we go to a store to shop but long story short i fell and hurt my foot so we had to go back early as soon as we get into the house we hear moaning i immediately looked at my mom and told her i told you so as soon as i said that my mom ran upstairs like the nba like for part part two on how me and my mom walked in on my sister sleeping with my stepdad okay so boom like i said we came home early and immediately heard moaning i looked at my mom and said i told you so as soon as i said that my mom ran upstairs like she was a track star she's a runner she's a track star anyways i ran after my mom and we opened the door together and we see my sister naked with my stepdad my sister immediately started crying and my mom was literally beating my stepdad and me oh yeah i, I was just laughing <laughs> like that was not shocking at all like i literally saw it coming after my mom was done beating my stepdad's ass he was begging her for forgiveness and y'all she forgave him i was so mad that i called the cops but then the cops told me that it wasn't an emergency so they hung up on me so i was even more fed up so i decided that i was gonna beat my stepdad's ass but a hundred times worse than my mom did then i did it to my sister and it gets worse like for part three Part three on how me and my mom walked in on my sister sleeping with my stepdad. Okay, so boom, like I said, I was beating my stepdad's ass and then I was beating my sister's ass. Because I was so mad that my mom literally forgave this man for sleeping with her daughter. And my sister was literally always trying to sleep with my stepdad like she was sick they all were sick so i called my biological dad and i told him everything then he came over and then he gave my stepdad a real ass whooping my sister actually lost her v card to my stepdad and y'all she got pregnant i didn't want anything to do with that baby and no one else in the family wanted anything to do with that baby so my sister ended up giving the baby up for adoption and shortly after she gave birth, she went to jail, as she should where she belongs. And so does my stepdad. Look, y'all, not all family is good family. They could be crazy and nasty. Goodbye. Story time on how my babysitter used a teddy bear to spy on me while I changed. Okay, so boom. My parents worked a lot and they both worked night shifts. My dad would come home first at like 11 p.m. And then my mom would usually come around 1 a.m. My parents didn't want me to be home alone for too long. So I would have a babysitter from 3 when I would get off of school till 11 when my dad came home. By the way, I'm 12 and the babysitter that we're going to be talking about is 19. So I usually stayed with my older cousin till my dad came home. But my cousin and her family moved. So my parents were forced to get me an actual babysitter so like a week into me dealing with this new babysitter one night i was changing and my babysitter tried to open the door but it was locked i told her that i was changing but she told me that i have to leave my door unlocked just in case something happens i only believed her because my parents had a similar rule but eventually my babysitter was always walking into me accidentally while i changed i was getting annoyed so i had to think of something to stop her y'all i'm running out of time like for part two Part two on how my babysitter used a teddy bear to spy on me while I changed. Okay, so boom, like I said, my babysitter kept accidentally walking in on me while I was changing. So to stop her, after I would get out to shower, I would literally go to her and say, hey, I'm in my room changing. I'll be right back. Please don't come in. So she had no choice but to stop accidentally seeing me well that stopped her for a week and then she got me a teddy bear i was excited because it was a pretty big bear and it was super soft she came in my room with me and said she got the perfect spot for the bear 
And I was like, okay, cool. Y'all, she put it right on my dresser, front and center. Great view to see everything. And ever since then, she never came back into my room. Y'all, the things I did in my room, like dancing with no clothes on, acting like I was Beyonce on stage, shaking my little booty with barely any clothes on. And little did I know she was downstairs watching the whole thing. Because the camera was in the teddy bear's eyes. Like for part three. Part three on how my babysitter used a teddy bear to spy on me while I changed. Okay, so boom, like I said, she gave me a teddy bear with camera eyes and put it on my dresser. I, of course, didn't notice that there was actually cameras in the eyes of the teddy bear. Well, one day my mom was cleaning my room and she asked me where did I get this bear from? And I told her that my babysitter got it for me. And my mom was like, oh, okay. For some reason, my mom was creeped out about the bear and she ended up putting it in the washroom to clean it later. That same night before I even got a hello, my babysitter said, why'd you move the bear? And I looked at her and said, how did you even know the bear was moved? She kind of stumbled on her words, but then she told me that my mom told her. I obviously fell for it and was like, oh yeah, she put it in the washroom to clean later. Y'all, my babysitter went to the washroom and took the bear and she placed it back on the dresser at the same spot. And she told me to tell my mom that we washed the bear together. I really didn't care, so I was just like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I went about my day. This is where it gets real. Like for part four. Part four on how my babysitter used a teddy bear to spy on me while I changed. Okay, so boom, like I said, after my mom moved the teddy bear, my babysitter went in and moved it back. The next day, it was Saturday, so my mom was off. My mom came in my room and saw the teddy bear and asked me why I brought it back up. So I said, honestly, mom, the babysitter put it back up. She was so sad that she moved it. You should have never even told her. And my mom just looked at me confused and was like, what do you mean? I didn't tell her I moved the bear. And I said, of course you did, mom. You probably just forgot. Because before she even walked through those doors, she asked me why I moved the bear. My mom's eyes opened wide and she froze. My mom took her phone out and opened a flash and shined it into the bear's eyes. And then she screamed, oh my gosh, and then grabbed the teddy bear and ran to her room. There the camera was. My mom called the cops and then the cops went to my babysitter's house like 15 minutes away. And my babysitter's parents, not knowing what's going on, let the cops in. Y'all, like for part five. Part five on how my babysitter used a teddy bear to spy on me while I changed. Okay, so boom, like I said, my mom grabbed the teddy bear and ran to her room and called the cops. The cops went to my babysitter's house and her parents let them in. So the cops went into my babysitter's room and then confiscated the laptop. Y'all, she had videos of me and about five other girls that she babysat for. And she was recording all of us naked. And we're all minors. She, of course, went to jail and my parents refused to hire anyone to babysit me anymore. They actually prefer a family member or they just leave me home, to be honest. And my parents actually didn't tell me what happened until I got older, which I'm now 18, because they didn't want me to feel so violated. So they handled it all without me knowing, which I'm grateful for, because I probably would have had a mental breakdown if my mom really told me what happened at that very moment. So anyways, be careful who you leave alone with your kids, guys. Story time on how my Uber driver tried to kidnap me on my birthday. Okay, y'all, so today's story is my own. And thank you guys for 1 million followers. All right, y'all, let's get into it. Okay, so boom. About two years ago in 2019, I lived by myself in my own apartment. At this time, I was at the end of my lease and I was actually moving to another apartment. I had to do everything by myself because I had nobody to help me. So I had to go get a U-Haul truck. This was my first time using Uber because I have my own car. But to get to U-Haul, I had to Uber over there so I could get the truck and then go from apartment to apartment. My first Uber driver bringing me to the U-Haul truck was fine. I had no issues with him and it was pretty normal and fast. So once I was done with the U-Haul truck and I was done moving, I had to return the truck to its location. And then I had to Uber back to my apartment where my car was. Now this second Uber driver, this is where the issue comes in. Y'all, it was literally crazy. My life was at stake. Like for part two. Part two on how my Uber driver tried to kidnap me on my birthday. Okay, so boom, like I said, I returned my U-Haul truck and I waited for my Uber driver to come pick me up. When my Uber driver came to pick me up, right from the beginning, I knew something was off about him. Always trust your instincts. He was a little weird and off, but I told myself that it's only a 10 minute drive and it will be over soon. So I sat on the back of the car and I just stayed on my phone, you know, minding my business. And then the guy just started talking to me like I guess he was trying to have small talk. But the weird thing is I couldn't understand what he was saying. And I got footage, you guys. Listen to this. Yeah, I didn't know what he was saying, but I just thought he wanted to do small talk. So I just was like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, oh, ooh, ah. But then all of a sudden, he went off the path of my route. 
I was like, um, excuse me, you took the wrong turn. Then he turned back and looked at me and said, I think we're going exactly where we need to be. It gets worse. Like for part three. Part three on how my Uber driver tried to kidnap me on my birthday. Okay, so boom, like I said, he went off the path of my route. And I said, um, excuse me, you made the wrong turn. Then he turned around and looked at me and said, I think we're going exactly where we need to be. I still didn't get it and I looked confused and I was just like, just drop me off at this gas station here. And child, he locked the door. At that moment, my heart sank and I knew exactly what was going on. I was being kidnapped on my birthday. He locked all the doors and put child lock so I wouldn't be able to unlock and leave either. I was under pressure, but I knew I had to think fast and get out of this situation. Y'all, he was driving fast, but thank God he wasn't on a highway, so there was red lights. And I live in Miami, so traffic hour is real. I knew that once he stopped at a red light, that that would be my only chance to get the hell out this car. So here we go. We stopped at the red light, and I took his head and bashed it into his steering wheel. He didn't see it coming, so I did it pretty easy. Running out of time, like for part four. Part four on how my Uber driver tried to kidnap me on my birthday. Okay, so boom, like I said, he stopped at a red light, and I took his head and started bashing it into the wheel. He didn't see it coming, so that's why I was able to overpower him at that moment. As I was bashing his head, I knew that his door was the only way I was able to get out because of the child lock. As I bashed his head, I unlocked the door, and I literally slinged my whole body to the front of the car and i was literally on top of him unlocked the door opened it and i just jumped out he held on to one of my legs so i ended up falling on the floor on the street but at this point everyone was looking and someone was coming to my rescue so he just closed his door and locked it and as soon as the light turned green he bolted i was bruised all over like my arm but mostly my knees I went inside the gas station and I waited for my friend to come pick me up. Y'all, all this on my birthday ruined my whole day. But I say that to say this. Be careful. Thank you guys for one mail. Story time on how my mom and dad did the nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom. My best friend is 17. My mom is 34 and my dad is 38. Every day after school, my mom would pick me and my best friend up and take us to our home because my best friend's parents worked until late night. My parents grew to love my best friend and she became part of the family. Well, one night I went to another friend's house to complete a homework project. And when I got back, my parents and my friend looked strange. They were all laughing and just really touchy with each other. Little strange, but I thought nothing of it and I pushed it to the side and a month later I got a job. So now my mom would pick me and my best friend up from school, but this time she would drop me off at Chick-fil-A. And every night I got back, things got weirder and weirder. But once again, I just kept brushing it off. But little did I know that I was about to walk into some mess. Let's just say cops were called. Like for part two. Part two on how my mom and dad did the nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom, like I said, things kept getting weird with my parents and my best friend, but I just kept brushing it off. Well, one day I was covering a shift at my job, Chick-fil-A, and when I got there, the person was there. Turns out that they were just playing a prank on me, but that's neither here nor there. So I called my mom to come pick me up because it was so early. My mom didn't answer, my best friend didn't answer, and my dad didn't answer, so I got worried. I had $40, so I ended up just taking an Uber home. Once I got there, I searched my whole house and there was no one there but i found all three of their phones in my parents room and my mom's clothes was all over the place so i called the cops i start searching the house and i'm on the phone with the cops i end up going to the back of the house where the spa is yeah our house was pretty big i make a right turn to the spa and find my dad my mom and my best friend doing the nasty in the water child like for part three Part three on how my mom and dad did the nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom, like I said, I make a right turn to the spa and I found my mom, my dad, and my best friend doing the nasty in the water. I literally screamed so hard and the cops asked me if I was okay. Then I said, sorry, there's no missing person, but there is underage nastiness going on. The police immediately came, arrested them, and they pressed charges. All three of those people I call my mom dad and best friend tried to apologize to me but i definitely did not accept that and i ended up moving into my granny's home now i'm 27 and i'm happily married and i didn't invite none of them i also have a one-year-old baby boy and my mom is trying to see him but nope my grandparents are my only parents that i know just because your blood doesn't make you family good riddance Story time on how my mom and dad did the nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom. My best friend is 17, my mom is 34, and my dad is 38. 
Every day after school, my mom would pick me and my best friend up and take us to our home because my best friend's parents worked until late night. My parents grew to love my best friend and she became part of the family. Well, one night I went to another friend's house to complete a homework project. And when I got back, my parents and my friend looked strange. They were all laughing and just really touchy with each other. Little strange, but I thought nothing of it and I pushed it to the side and a month later I got a job. So now my mom would pick me and my best friend up from school, but this time she would drop me off at Chick-fil-A. And every night I got back, things got weirder and weirder. But once again, I just kept brushing it off. But little did I know that I was about to walk into some mess. Let's just say cops were called. Like for part two. Part two on how my mom and dad did the nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom, like I said, things kept getting weird with my parents and my best friend, but I just kept brushing it off. Well, one day I was covering a shift at my job Chick-fil-A, and when I got there, the person was there. Turns out that they were just playing a prank on me, but that's neither here nor there. So I called my mom to come pick me up because it was so early. My mom didn't answer, my best friend didn't answer, and my dad didn't answer, so I got worried. I had $40, so I ended up just taking an Uber home. Once I got there, I searched my whole house and there was no one there but i found all three of their phones in my parents room and my mom's clothes was all over the place so i called the cops i start searching the house and i'm on the phone with the cops i end up going to the back of the house where the spa is yeah our house was pretty big i make a right turn to the spa and find my dad my mom and my best friend doing the nasty in the water child like for part three Part three on how my mom and dad did the nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom, like I said, I make a right turn to the spa and I found my mom, my dad, and my best friend doing the nasty in the water. I literally screamed so hard and the cops asked me if I was okay. Then I said, sorry, there's no missing person, but there is underage nastiness going on. The police immediately came, arrested them, and they pressed charges. All three of those people I call my mom dad and best friend tried to apologize to me but i definitely did not accept that and i ended up moving into my granny's home now i'm 27 and i'm happily married and i didn't invite none of them i also have a one-year-old baby boy and my mom is trying to see him but nope my grandparents are my only parents that i know just because your blood doesn't make you family good riddance story time about how my boyfriend mom went from hating me to having a threesome with me and her son okay so boom we are jumping right in one day i was with my boyfriend and we were on our way to the movies and he got a call from his mom she told him that he needed to come home immediately because of something important at home but i knew that every time she did this was because she really just wanted her son to stop hanging out with me because she hated my guts like she did not like me and i never knew why oh but one day i figured it out so one evening on the one month anniversary of me and my boyfriend i was getting ready doing what girls do and i kind of expected you know what to happen so i shaved my hoo-ha i got all pretty and i headed over to my boyfriend's house i knock on a door and his mom answers his mom then tells me that i'm an hour early and he's still getting his haircut so he's not home i told her sorry i must have gotten the times wrong so i asked her if i can wait right here she gave me a disgusted look and said whatever and slammed the door then she said she's been waiting for this moment like for part two Part two on how my boyfriend mom went from hating me to having a threesome with me and her son. Okay, so boom, like I said, she closed the door and told me she's been waiting for this moment. She then says that I'm a fine young lady and she's been waiting to have me alone and that we have one hour before her son gets there. At that moment, it hit me. I knew exactly what was going on. And quite frankly, I was happy because his mom is hot. She led me to her room and then we started doing the nasty. By the way, she's 29 and I'm 17. Y'all wouldn't believe what happens next. My boyfriend walked through the door, caught us, but he wasn't shocked. He wasn't even mad. It was more like a jealous thing. Then he joined and we all started doing the nasty. I was literally shocked. I didn't believe what was happening. And this went on for two years. But then me and my boyfriend wanted to stop and just focus on each other and not his mom. She didn't like that at all. Like for part three. Part three on how my boyfriend mom went from hating me to having a threesome with me and her son. Okay, so boom, like I said, after two years of me and my boyfriend dealing with his mom, we wanted to stop and just focus on each other. And oh, she didn't like that at all. She went right back to treating me horribly and hating my guts. And whenever she had a chance, she kept trying to break me and my boyfriend up. But it never worked. 
It looks like the only way to make her stop is to dabble back with her, but I'm not interested. Eventually, I'll move out with my boyfriend and we'll be all situated. So if you find out your boyfriend mom hates you, maybe she just wants to be with you. Story time on how my dad tried to abuse me, but my mom saved my life. Okay, y'all, so boom, we gonna get right into it. I was 11 years old at the time, but I only lived with my mom. My parents were married, but my dad had an engineering job at another state, so I rarely seen him. Until around this time when everything started happening, my dad lost his job and he ended up moving back in with me and my mom. So me and my dad's relationship was never the best because it was kind of short-lived and over the phone, but I thought that him moving in would change that. Now, my mom was working two jobs, but she was doing so great at her first job that she was going to quit at her second job because they were giving her a promotion. Keep this in mind because it's important for the future. So about two weeks into my dad moving back in with us, I would always be alone with him when my mom went to work. And each day in these two weeks, it started escalating more and more between me and my dad. Things went from him rubbing my shoulders to my arms to my thighs and to my cat. I didn't know what to do. And each night I went to sleep crying, running out of time, like for part two. Part two on how my dad tried to abuse me, but my mom saved my life. Okay, so boom, like I said, my dad went from touching me on my shoulders to my arms to my thighs to my cat. I cried myself to sleep every night because I was terrified and I didn't know what to do. I didn't tell my mom because I was literally just scared. But my mom is a superhero. She noticed that there was something wrong with me. She asked me if I was okay and she kept checking on me every single night. I even heard her ask my dad what was going on. But of course, my dad denied knowing anything. But my mom noticed that things changed only when my dad moved back in. So the next day, remember that job I told you my mom had? Yeah, she got promoted and she quit her second job. She literally came home six hours early so of course my dad didn't expect her anytime soon well she seen my dad trying to do the nasty with me and she literally slapped the living soul out of him me and my mom went to my aunt's house and she divorced him and he's now in prison till this day i thank my mom because he never got a chance to fully violate me story time on how i was kidnapped by my insane dad okay so boom this all began at the time when i was eight years old so my teacher was off for whatever reason so we had a substitute teacher the substitute teacher ended up being my dad but i I didn't know he was my dad at the time but i always had a bad feeling when i was by him one day after class my dad asked me to stay to talk to him but because i always had a bad feeling about him i just made up an excuse and told him that i couldn't stay after class and even when i gave him that excuse he told me just give him a second but again he was weird so i got the fuck out of there anyways the next day at school we had free time and the whole time he was staring at me it was actually almost my birthday and i was passing out invitations to my classmates well somehow he got a hold of one of my invitations my birthday went by and everything was fine until the next day it was sunday and my mom was at work and i was babysitting my two little sisters and this is where it gets scary like for part, part two on how i was kidnapped by my insane dad okay so boom like i said it was Sunday and my mom was at work and I was babysitting my two little sisters. When I went to go get my sisters a snack, I heard something. I got scared and I immediately called my mom on our emergency phone. She looked at the cameras and there was nothing there, but I kept on hearing something. So I took my mom's old flip phone and I grabbed my two little sisters. I brought them to my room in our secret crawl place and I gave my older little sister the flip phone. I told my little sister to stay there and to not come out until I come back and that if I didn't come back to call the police and stay hidden until the police came i grabbed my bat and went downstairs and guess who it was my insane dad so that's when he told me that he was my dad and that he had proof so i went with him to get him away from my little sisters and that's when he threw me into his truck i texted my sister to signal before he took my phone like for part three part three on how i was kidnapped by my insane dad okay so boom like i said my dad threw me into his truck I was able to text my little sister to signal for help before he took my phone. About 20 minutes later, he stopped at a hotel. He again told me that I was his and that's why he would stare at me so much because he had to make sure. And then he said he had to make sure that I was his sacrifice, but I didn't understand what he was talking about. He was being very creepy. I ended up staying there with him for six days where he was burning me with cigarettes and he was abusing me every day. But thank God on the sixth day, the police was finally able to track me down. They were finally able to locate me and find me and thank God they did because my dad was actually planning on RIPing me. I ran to my mom, cried, told her I loved her, but I also told her that I did it to keep my sisters safe. Now he's in jail for 10 years and he can't come within 100 feet of me or my family. My family moved to Florida with my stepdad and now I'm expecting my little brother. Trust your instincts, guys. 
story time on how I hid in my boyfriend's closet and watched him get nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom, I'ma jump right into this one. So me and my boyfriend been together for one year and my best friend was the one who got us together. In the beginning, me and my boyfriend were in the honeymoon stage and I couldn't get enough of him, child. And meanwhile, my best friend was hating and started to get jealous. She started giving me attitude when I would call her. She started avoiding me when I would ask to go out. And she started to text me way less. So I took it as her trying to distance herself from me. I cried to her telling her she's my best friend and I don't want to lose her. Then we got back to being okay. Fast forward a couple months to the stage me and my boyfriend relationship is at now. Yeah, now he's acting funny. He's not talking to me as much. He's always distracted on his phone when I'm with him. And he started making excuses on why I almost never see him. Well, I'm crazy. And I was going to find out exactly what's going on. So I took his keys. Like for part two. Part two on how I hid in my boyfriend's closet and watched him get nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom, like I said, I'm crazy. And my boyfriend was acting funny, so I was going to get to the bottom of things. My boyfriend gave me spare keys to his apartment in the beginning of our relationship. You know, when we was in the honeymoon stage. I never used it because he always was home and he always opened the door for me. So he kind of forgot I had it, but I sure didn't. So this day, I let myself in. I wanted to see exactly why today he couldn't see me. So I went up to his room and I just hid in the closet. About an hour later, he came home with company. They didn't even watch a movie first. They immediately came to his room. I was peeking through the little closet space and my jaws dropped when I seen it was my best friend. They undressed each other and he slammed her on the bed. Y'all wouldn't believe what happened next. Like for part three. Part two on how I hid in my boyfriend's closet and watched him get nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom, like I said, I'm crazy. And my boyfriend was acting funny, so I was going to get to the bottom of things. My boyfriend gave me spare keys to his apartment in the beginning of our relationship. You know, when we was in the honeymoon stage. I never used it because he always was home and he always opened the door for me. So he kind of forgot I had it, but I sure didn't. So this day, I let myself in. I wanted to see exactly why today he couldn't see me. So I went up to his room and I just hid in the closet. About an hour later, he came home with company. They didn't even watch a movie first. They immediately came to his room. I was peeking through the little closet space and my jaws dropped when I seen it was my best friend. They undressed each other and he slammed her on the bed. Y'all wouldn't believe what happened next. Like for part three. Story time on how I caught my boyfriend cheating on me, so I stole his side piece and made her my girlfriend. Okay, so boom, we jumping right in. I've been with my boyfriend for three years and he knows that I'm bi. But it was one of those situations that you're with a guy for so long, people forget that you're even into girls. Because obviously I'm faithful to my man, but can't say the same for him. My boyfriend started to do the typical signs of a cheater. He was always texting and smiling on his phone. He was starting to see me a lot less. And he was giving excuses to why we never slept on the phone together anymore. Well, one night I was finally sleeping over and I knew this was my one chance to look through his phone. Because I probably wasn't going to see him for another week or two. While he was sleeping, I took his thumb and unlocked his phone. It didn't take me long to find his side piece. It hurt me so much to see him say he missed holding her and kissing her and a lot more graphic things. I went to his Instagram friend list and I put her name and I found her. Then I followed her. I put his phone back and then I left. And this is the beginning of the end. Like for part two. Part two on how I caught my boyfriend cheating on me, so I stole his side piece and made her my girlfriend. Okay, so boom, like I said, I followed her on Instagram, I put my boyfriend's phone back, and I left. He called me the next day asking where I was, and I just told him I couldn't sleep, so I just came home. A couple hours go by, and his side piece follows me back. I DM'd her with intentions to find out what's going on with her and my boyfriend, but we actually ended up having a great conversation. Then we exchanged numbers and talked all night we hit it off so well we went out the week after then we got drunk and we started making out there was just this natural spark between us and i guess since i was taking all of her time my boyfriend had a lot more time my boyfriend started asking to see me a lot more oh now you want to see me well his side piece came over one night and it was time for me to come clean i ended up telling her that i really liked her but that originally i was just going to ask her about my boyfriend child a tea after this like for part three story time on how protecting my kids landed me in jail okay so boom i have two daughters who i really love and they're the type of girls who are uh, extra 
My youngest is 16, my oldest is 18, and I myself am 38. Now when I say my kids are extra, I mean they don't hold back how they feel. If they don't like something, they express themselves and that's a blessing and a curse. But on this particular day, it was a curse. So one day we were at Walmart and I was in the kitchen section. Then all of a sudden my kids come running to me with a man running after them. I said, hey, hey, what are you doing chasing my daughters as they hid behind me? Then before the man could even answer, my oldest daughter said he grabbed my youngest daughter and told her to come with him. But then my oldest daughter pushed him back and grabbed my youngest daughter and said, don't put your dirty ass hands on my sister. And this man's response to my daughter is when I lose my shit and black out. Like for part two, on how protecting my kids landed me in jail okay so boom like i said my oldest daughter pushed him back and grabbed my youngest daughter and told him to get his dirty a hands off her little sister and that's when they ran to me as he chased them and called them out their names then this man interrupts my daughter as she's explaining and tells her to shut the f up i said excuse me who are you talking to this man says your daughter b child i took the nearest microwave and i slammed it in his face he falls to the floor and i proceed to stomp on him and mind you i was wearing heels security ends up coming and separating the man from me and my daughters and even though i explained that he grabbed my youngest daughter they still put me in jail but i was only in there for a couple hours and i had my oldest daughter drive back home and pick me up after no charges against me but i'm mad i got jail time for protecting my kids it's my kids I Story time on how my mom told me she wished she never had me. Okay, so boom, jumping right in. Question, you ever had a mom who loved you, motivated you, and respected you? Yeah, well, can't say the same for me. My mom is a single mother that had me at a young age and is currently in college. But the thing is, my mom hates me. And you know why she hates me? Because I have a relationship with my dad. She's mentally abusive and sometimes physical. She tells me how she's disgusted with me and how I should worship her since she brought me into this world and when i was younger she tried to get me to hate my dad and even use me as a weapon against my dad but my dad ended up putting himself on child support and doing shared custody well i had a birthday party when i was turning 16 and my dad paid for everything my mom kind of just showed up and on my birthday i was about to hear one of the most hurtful things a mother can say to their daughter like for part two Part 2 on how my mom told me she wished she never had me. Okay, so boom, like I said, I was turning 16 and my dad threw me a birthday party where he paid for everything. And my mom kind of just showed up. She gave me really bad energy and I tried to ignore it, but later that night, I walked into the restroom looking for my mom and she was in there with her friend. And that's when I heard her say that she should have aborted me and that she wished she never had me. I cried my eyes off and my mom didn't even care when she found out. My dad ended up getting full custody and I haven't seen or spoken to my mom ever since. Now I'm at a better place and I'm happy living with my dad and my loving stepmother and sister. Sometimes someone hurt is so deep rooted it places hatred on people who's undeserving. She hated my dad for leaving but for staying with me. And that's something that she's eventually going to have to come to terms with. But I refuse to let her bring me down. Now I'm loved, happy, and elevated. Stay blessed, y'all. Story time on how my parents sold me for a cow and goat. Okay, so boom, we jumping right into this one. So I'm an only child and my parents are farmers. My parents would always tell me how they were going to expand their herd and that I would be the one to help them. I never understood how though. I assumed that they were going to teach me how everything works and I'll eventually take over like a family business. But boy, was I wrong. On my 13th birthday, I was excited because I was going to the village to celebrate. Or so I thought. My parents actually brought me to an elderly man who I never met. The old man then examined me and smiled and gave my parents a thumbs up. Then they started debating on how much cows and goats I'm worth. And I just stood there completely confused as to what was going on. After my parents and the old man were done going back and forth about cows and goats, they came into a conclusion. Life for part two. Part two on how my parents sold me for a cow and goat. Okay, so boom, like I said, my parents and the old man came into a conclusion on how much I was worth. They settled at eight cows and six goats. Then I was married off against my will to become this man's eighth wife. I cried and told my parents, please no, but they told me that I should be grateful because I was still young and desirable. And I cost the most right now, which is making them grow a large herd. So when my parents were telling me I was going to be the one to help them, they never meant that I was taking 
taking over the farm. They were speaking about literally selling me. I was the youngest out of all the wives, so I got the most attention from my now husband. All of the other wives were like 16 and 20, so it's not like they were old or anything. And now at 14, I'm currently pregnant expecting my first child. And I'll make sure my baby is never sold. Story time on how I beat up my grandma. Yes, my grandma. You heard right. Let's get into it. Okay, so boom. I'm a 16-year-old high school student who finds myself at my grandma's house almost every day. My mom's a single mother and works two jobs. And instead of leaving me home alone, she always drops me off at my grandma's house. And this has been our routine ever since I was five years old. My mom just felt more comfortable leaving me at my grandma's house. But what my mom didn't know is that I'd rather stay home alone rather than going to my grandma grandma's house my grandma has been beating me up ever since i was five years old she didn't beat me up for any valid reasons she would just be mad at me for the smallest things like one time i broke her glass chandelier while i was playing with my ball and she hit me another time i broke her 50 inch tv by accident and again she hit me y'all wouldn't believe this third reason why she beat me up like for part two Part 2 on how I beat up my 76 year old grandma. Okay, so boom, like I said, my grandma would always beat me up for the smallest things. None of her reasons were valid. She beat me up once for breaking her glass chandelier while I was playing ball. Another time I broke her 50 inch TV screen on accident and she beat me up again. She even would tell me to wash the dishes and when I would tell her no because I don't live here, I shouldn't be washing anything, she would once again beat me up for being quote unquote disrespectful all this hitting throughout the years and i was just over it and my mom always sided with my grandma well i'm 16 now and i was over it my 76 year old grandma should have learned to keep her hands to herself so this particular night she told me to study but i didn't want to study i wanted to watch tv so i told her no straight up and things escalated like for part three Part 3 on how I beat up my 76 year old grandma. Okay, so boom, like I said, my grandma told me to go study and I told her no, I wanted to watch TV. She said she was sick of my slick mouth and made her way over to hit me. But this time, oh no, I wasn't going for it. I pushed her away from me, then I punched her on her arms and her face. She fell down and started screaming in shock that I even hit her. Once my mom came home, my grandma told my mom what happened and my mom beat the living soul out of me and my mom told me if i ever raised my hands to my grandma again she was going to do more than just hit me with a belt truth is my grandma never hit me unless i was rude or broke something and that happened very often come to find out i actually suffered from aggressive behavior in children and needed to get treated thank god i got treated and i'm better now and me and grandma has a great relationship now don't beat up your grandma I caught my fiance in bed with my mom, except they weren't actually doing it. They were just sleeping on the same bed, but also they were wearing very little clothing. When I walked in on them, they jumped up and were acting very nervous, but they told me nothing happened. That my mom was just making sure he was okay because he drank a little too much at the wedding shower. But why not call me and tell me my fiance is drunk? Plus, my fiance and mom has always been sneaky with each other. I don't know, I feel like they had SEX, but I have no proof. Should I trust them and go through with the wedding? or call off the wedding based on my intuition but no proof comment below this is why you shouldn't marry a professor okay so boom my husband is a professor at a university and he loves his job maybe a little too much so my husband is 50 and i'm 40 and lately he hasn't been wanting to be intimate with me at all he's been coming home from work way later than usual saying that he's tutoring some students well i decided to cook my husband's favorite meal and surprise him for working so hard i went to the university and opened his classroom door and i couldn't believe my eyes his class classroom was empty but i did see his car in a lot so i went over to see if maybe he was just heading home well when i went back downstairs i was happy to see his car was still there the car looked like it was shaking a little bit but i it was dark so i just i just wasn't sure what was going on i walked over to his car and there it was i was in complete shock <laughs> like for part two this is why you shouldn't marry a professor 
part two. Okay, so boom, like I said, I opened his classroom door and it was empty, but I did see his car downstairs, so I went back downstairs. I was happy to see his car was still downstairs and it looked like it was shaking a little bit, but I just didn't know what was going on because it was a little bit dark. Well, I walked over to my husband's car and there it was. My husband was in the back seat of his car with a student and obviously not tutoring. And to my surprise, his student was a 23 year old boy. And some back actions were taking place, child, if you know what I mean. I was so shocked, I dropped the food and I ran and went home. I didn't even give my husband a chance to react. He begged me not to leave him and said it was nothing and that he loved me. I obviously divorced him and can you believe he's still with that same student now? Child, like for part three. This is why you shouldn't marry a professor, part two. Three. Okay, so boom, like I said, I caught my husband in the backseat of his car with a 23-year-old boy, which was his student. He begged me not to leave him and said that he loved me, but I obviously divorced him because like, whoa. At the time, I was hurt, but I genuinely got over it because at least he's living his truth now. I, on the other hand, finally had the kids I always wanted at 42, and I'm happily married with my new husband that's so in love with me. Stay away from them professors. Story time on how I read my little sister's diary and found her fantasizing about me. Okay, so boom, jumping right in. My little sister and I have a great relationship. I'm her big sister and I protect her from all her bullies and always have her back in any situation. My little sister is 13 and I'm 18. But one thing about my sister is she gon' write in her diary. Literally, she's obsessed with jotting down every single thing that happens in her life. Well, recently, my sister has been acting a bit different. She's just been so distant, and I feel like she's been pushing me away. Me being a worried big sister, I asked her if she's having trouble at school, but she told me she's fine and closed the door on me. So, since she wasn't telling me anything, I waited until she went to volleyball practice and snuck into her room. I took her diary, and I know I shouldn't do it, but I couldn't help it because I really felt like my sister was having trouble at school. But what I found in that diary, diary changed our sister relationship change for the worst like for part two part two on how i read my little sister's diary and found her fantasizing about me okay so boom like i said i snuck into my sister's room and even though i know i shouldn't i took her diary and i immediately started reading it Everything seemed normal at first, talking about her teachers and her friends, but nothing about bullying and some things here and there about our parents. But when I flipped to the next page, there was a picture of me with the title, My Beautiful Sister. At first, I smiled thinking my sister really loves me. But after I really read through it, I found out my sister really loves me. She wrote about how my skin was so soft and how every time she looks at my lips, she wants to kiss me. She even wrote about how I smell so good and a lot more weird, crazy, too far things. I closed the diary and ran to my room and just freaked out. It all made sense why my sister's been acting so weird. She's been fantasizing about me. Like for part three. Part three on how I read my little sister's diary and found her fantasizing about me. Okay, so boom, like I said, after I found out that my sister was fantasizing about me, I needed a game plan because I felt like that would just be too weird to tell my parents. So what I did was start being mean to my sister and I kept sneaking into her room to read her diary every day to see if she would stop. And it worked. She stopped after about four months. Thank goodness. She started saying things like I can't stand my sister and how I'm spoiled and how I'm full of myself. Oh, but I didn't care. She even started writing about a new boy that she liked in class. And I was even more relieved. Thank goodness. Well, my sister hates me now, but at least she doesn't fantasize about me. <laughs> Yikes. Story time on how my sister married our stepdad after our mom passed away. Okay, so boom. My sister and I are like best friends since we're only one year apart. We have the same mom and dad, but my mom divorced our dad after catching him cheating on her. About five years later, my mom met our stepdad and got married and we've been a happy family ever since. So me and my sister started off very close, but our relationship became strained when I noticed my sister and stepdad being way too close. I never caught them doing anything, but their relationship was inappropriate. But it always happened behind me and my mom's back. I I only seen them sneak off a couple times when they didn't expect me to come out my room while my mom was at work but it was only very long hugs and kisses on the cheeks that i seen unfortunately my mom got sick and ended up passing away due to an incurable problem me and my mom were super close and all my mom asked our stepdad to do is take care of us alongside our real dad little did we know like
Part two on how my sister married our stepdad after our mom passed away. Okay, so boom, like I said, my mom got sick with an incurable problem and just asked our stepdad to take care of us alongside our real dad. Then my mom passed away in peace. But little did she or I know the chaos that would come behind her death. By the way, you guys, I'm 16 and my sister is 17. Shortly after our mom passed away, the energy shifted in the house. It was just negative in there and I just felt it. My sister started sleeping in bed with our stepdad where my mom once laid her head. And of course, I knew what was going on in there. Who wouldn't? One day, I was so enraged by my sister's actions, especially after our mom passed away, that I barged into their room where I seen balloons, hearts, and roses everywhere. I then saw my sister crying as she happily held her hand up and said we're getting married. I got into a screaming match with my sister and how she could do this to our mom, to where she responded, mom's not here. It's only been five months. Like Part three on how my sister married our stepdad after our mom passed away. Okay, so boom, like I said, my sister happily held her hand up and said we're getting married. We argued and I told her how could she do this to mom. And she responded mom's not here anymore. It's only been five months, guys. I was so angry. I couldn't hold myself back. My sister was older, but I was bigger and taller, and I beat my sister up until our stepdad broke it up. My sister had a huge black eye, and before I left, I spit on my stepdad. I know it's nasty, guys, but you don't understand the level of anger and disrespect I felt for my mom. I called my real dad, and once I explained everything to him, he went inside and grabbed my sister away from our stepdad. The dads went to war, but my real dad ended up winning. And then he called the cops. My stepdad groomed my sister and engaged in unlawful acts with her. He's currently in jail where my sister visits him all the time. My sister is convinced she was not groomed and that they were in love. She even says she'll wait for him. She'll be waiting a long time. I'm just glad that I was able to get justice from Story time on how a man followed me into my apartment and tried to harm me. Okay, so boom. I'm 19 years old and I've been living alone for the past year. It's just me and my pet dog and every morning and night I walk my dog. A bad habit that I have is that since I live in a safe neighborhood, every time I go downstairs to walk my dog, I leave my door unlocked. I never thought that anyone was even watching me, to be honest. My thought process was like, since the door is closed, no one is going to actually think it's unlocked. But that wasn't very smart of me. One very scary night, my life changed. It was around 10 o'clock at night. And I did my usual routine and started walking my dog. I left my door unlocked and thought nothing of it. Especially since around this time, no one is really outside. I went back upstairs to the fourth floor where I stay and opened my door, then walked inside and closed my door. But I didn't lock it just yet. I was taking off my dog's leash. Then all of a sudden, a 40-year-old man opened my door. Follow and like for part two. Part two on how a man followed me into my apartment and tried to harm me. Okay, so boom, like I said, I was taking off my dog's leash and because I left the door unlocked, a 40-year-old man just opened my door. At this point, I was at a distance from the door and closer to my bedroom. My dog started barking and then I said, excuse me, what are you doing? But I did say it in fear. Then the man took a step in my door and said, I just want to talk. My door was still slightly open, but more closed, and he was fully into my home at this point. He told me to go into my room and be quiet or else he would use his weapon. He had a GUN. I didn't want him to do anything to me, so I listened. But I had hope because I also had my boyfriend's GUN in my room. My boyfriend leaves it there so I can protect myself. I never thought I would have to use it, but I'm glad my boyfriend thought of my safety, regardless of what I said. I walked to my room shaking with him about 10 steps behind me. As soon as I walked in, I grabbed the GUN, turned around, and shot him. Like for part three on how a man followed me into my apartment and tried to harm me. Okay, so boom, like I said, I walked to my room shaking as he was 10 steps behind me. I told my dog to heal because I didn't want this man to harm my dog either. As soon as I walked into my room, I took the GUN and shot him. The man fell to the ground and so did his weapon. I turned on the lights and shot him right in the stomach around here on his side. My neighbors all came out after the shot and we all called the cops. They got there pretty fast. And my boyfriend stayed with me for three months every day after that. They did an investigation and looked at the cameras. Turned out that he'd been stalking me the whole time. He knew my habits and planned to get me at the right time. Even if you feel alone, someone can be watching. I'm grateful for my boyfriend for leaving his weapon with me. He has like three, but leaving one with me saved my life. Who knows what would have happened to me had I not shot this man. The shot missed his abdominal muscle, so he lived, but it's going to be a sad life. Like and follow for part four to find out what happened. Part 4 on how a man followed me into my apartment and tried to harm me. Okay, so boom, like I said, he knew all my habits and planned to get me at the right time. You never know who's watching you, even if you feel alone. The shot missed his abdominal muscle, so he lived. 
but it's going to be a sad life. The doctor said that his injury looks like eventually it would lead to death. And even if it doesn't, he will be very weak and fragile. So he couldn't hurt anyone even if he wanted to. But until then, he will be in jail. So no matter how safe you feel, make sure you are protecting yourself. And don't be like me doing stupid things like leaving your door unlocked. It takes two seconds to lock your door and that could be the difference from life or death. Stay safe guys, both men and women. Story time on how my husband slept with my daughter. Okay, so boom, let's get right into it. So I'm 38 and I'm married to my husband who is 40. I have a daughter who is 16, but it was from a previous marriage and not my current husband. We currently don't have any kids together. Well, I like to say my relationship with my daughter is healthy, but she's very spoiled. I try to set boundaries and work ethic into my daughter, but my husband always gets in the way of that and ends up making me do whatever my daughter says. At first, I thought it was just my husband really stepping into that stepfather role, but then it became weird. My husband and daughter would plan things without me and be gone for long periods of time. My daughter started being really mean to me and tells me how I'm old and she's young and full of life. My husband would never defend me when I would tell my daughter that's wrong for her to say. After all the sneaking and weird behavior, I decided to set my husband and daughter up i promise you what i found out was the last thing i could have ever imagined like part two on how my husband slept with my daughter okay so boom like i said after all the sneaking and weird behavior i decided to set my husband and daughter up to see exactly what's going on i placed cameras in my room and my daughter's room plus the kitchen and living room I told my husband and daughter that I'll be going to visit my mom for three days who lived an hour away. And of course, they both declined to go with me. Y'all, I kid you not. Barely even an hour after I left, there it was in my living room camera. My husband and daughter watching a movie making out. Then my daughter hops on the top and they remove clothing. And I think you can see where it went from there. I was in so much shock and anger. I was crying, man. My emotions were all over the place. I called my ex-husband, the father of my daughter, and he came under 10 minutes. We both barged into the house where my current husband and daughter were still engaging in crazy activity. And it got crazy after this. Like for part Part three on how my husband slept with my daughter. Okay, so boom, like I said, we both barged into the house where my current husband and daughter were still engaging in crazy activities. My ex-husband took our daughter and started beating her with a belt. Then he screamed at her to go upstairs and put some clothes on, which she did. And then there was my current husband, crying curled up on the floor, completely undressed, might I add, begging my ex-husband not to hurt him or call the cops. He had the audacity to tell us that our daughter was the one who came on to him yes my daughter was the one on camera who initiated everything that was clear as day but you as an adult who is married should know better than to partake in anything with a minor let alone your wife's child i got a divorce immediately but unfortunately my husband faced no jail time and since my daughter wanted to be grown and follow him and tell me she hates me and that's why i can't keep a husband both me and her father disowned her she can go be grown on her own Karma came pretty quick because he ended up passing away from an illness and he cheated and had a baby with another woman while with my daughter who also had a kid by him. It was just embarrassing and messy. My daughter begged for my forgiveness, but I just couldn't do it. She's okay with her dad now, but my daughter having a kid and my grandchild with my ex-husband is just something I currently can't get past. What do you think? Am I wrong for that? Should I give my daughter a second chance? Comment below. Story time on how my girlfriend got me a bunny for my birthday and I killed it by mistake. I feel terrible. Okay, so boom, let me explain. I love animals. I'm an animal lover. I have two dogs and one thing I've been wanting for the longest is a bunny. I'm literally always looking at pictures of bunnies and videos on YouTube about bunnies. My girlfriend knew this about me so for my birthday she surprised me with a bunny and made me so happy. I had a bunny house and food with water ready for my new bunny life. But I guess I wasn't as prepared as I thought. Three days after getting my new bunny, I let him out his cage to hop around since he was pooping a lot i also had my dogs out playing and everything and everything was fine well little did i know my heart was really about to be broken because i messed up like for part two 
part two on how my girlfriend got me a bunny for my birthday and I killed it by mistake. Okay, so boom, like I said, three days after getting my new bunny, I let him out his cage because he was pooping a lot. I put him in my backyard alongside with my two dogs. He was hopping and my dogs were playing and everything was fine until my dog had a grass seed between his paws and I started taking it out. Once I was done, I looked for my bunny and I couldn't find him. My heart sank and I started panicking. I went to the front of my house where the road was and I seen my bunny completely flattened on the road. He was ran over by a car while I was paying attention to my dog. I cried, bagged him up and buried him and I didn't even have a chance to name him yet. I feel like literal trash. Should I tell my girlfriend or should I just move on and do better in the future? Comment and Story time on how I lied to my boyfriend about being the father of my child. Okay, so boom, let's get right into it. So I have a boyfriend who's the love of my life and I'm literally obsessed with him. I want to be with him forever. We've been together for two years, but unfortunately my boyfriend ended up breaking my trust. You see, my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend and I found out that they've been sleeping with each other for the past year. Once I found out, my boyfriend begged and begged and begged for me to stay and he cut all ties with my friend telling me he doesn't want to lose me i was so hurt but because i loved him so much i forgave him but my forgiveness came with the price i ended up having a one night stand with his best friend i wanted revenge and i was being spiteful and just doing the whole tit for tat thing but little did i know what was to come like for part Part two on how I lied to my boyfriend about being the father of my child. Okay, so boom, like I said, after I found out that my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend for over a year, I ended up having a one night stand with his best friend because I wanted revenge. I was being spiteful and doing tit for tat. I felt horrible about it and me and his best friend decided not to tell anyone. Well, I got pregnant and without him knowing, I had a DNA test done on my boyfriend. He is not the father. And the only other person I slept with was his best friend. I really feel horrible, but seven years later, my now husband still thinks my seven-year-old son is his. Am I the asshole for not telling him even though he cheated on me first? This is why you should always make sure that your parents are your real parents. Okay, so boom, let's get right into it. So on Monday in my biology class, we're discussing blood types. This girl was trying to figure out why her blood type didn't make sense on her Punnett square. She told her professor that her dad was O and her mom was A, but yet she was AB. My professor explained that that's impossible, that she's confused on the blood types or something. The professor even drew out different Punnett squares to show her. The girl was very persistent that she wasn't wrong on the blood types and was confident that there was something wrong with how the professor was doing it so my professor told her to talk to her parents to double check the blood types and all to make sure that the information was correct so she comes back to class the next day and my professor made it a point to ask if she was mistaken or confused and what she said next shocked the whole entire class ciao like for part this is why you should always make sure your parents are your real parents part two okay so boom like i said my professor made it a point to ask if she was mistaken or confused about the blood types and i tell you this girl is ballsy she announced the entire class of 243 people turns out her mother had an affair with her husband's brother which is his stepbrother so technically she's been raised by her uncle and not her dad her entire life her mom hid it from the both of them for 21 years because my my professor told her she was wrong with her blood types she figured out her uncle was actually her dad and vice versa and now they're getting a divorce be careful guys you might be living with lies Story time on how I sold my farts in a jar and made big money. Okay, so boom, let's get right into it. So I'm extremely broke. And because I'm broke, I did what many people would do and went to Google. I looked up ways to make money when you're dead broke as a woman. Dancers came up and also fans only and even selling my intimates. But I served the Lord, so I didn't want to do anything involving my body in a sexual way. No judgment, by the way, just not for me based on my beliefs. Well, anyways, I stumbled across a page of a woman i don't know if she prefers her identity to be hidden so let's just call her hannah montana well hannah montana explained how she made 70k selling her farts and it immediately one shocked me and two piqued my interest now this was something i could do i had to start my fart journey like for part two 
Part two on how I sold my farts in a jar and made big money. Okay, so boom, like I said. I stumbled across a page of a woman, and I don't know if she wants her identity to be hidden, so let's call her Hannah Montana. Well, Hannah Montana explained how she made 70k selling her farts. It immediately one shocked me and two piqued my interest. This was something I could do. Contrary to popular belief, there is a market out there for farts online. Believe it or not, people out there buy farts in many forms, varying from jars to lollipops that have been farted on by fart stars so i quickly educated myself on how to provide this product and i grew my audience pretty fast now i eat a lot of egg boils and fart for a living i know you're jealous <laughs> story time on how i cheated on my husband with his son okay so boom let's get right into it so i met my husband at my job where we quickly fell in love got married and the rest is history my husband had a child from a previous relationship who was 17 years old. By the way, I'm 27 and my husband is 34. My husband was really great at his job, but he started treating me really bad. He was always working and had me stay home because he wanted to be the provider. He also bought food for me when I was hungry since I don't cook, but sometimes it would just be food that I didn't want. Before he leaves, he kisses me and makes breakfast for the house as if that's going to make anything better and only spends time with me on his one day off. It's ridiculous. Well, I started spending a lot more time with my stepson and we became really close. I started feeling something real between us and my husband was being horrible. So I made my move like for part two. Part two on how I cheated on my husband with his son. Okay, so boom, like I said, my husband was treating me horribly. So I made my move. I started feeling something real between me and my stepson. We watched movies together. We went grocery shopping together and plain just enjoyed each other's company. I felt something real between us and I know he did too. One day, once again, while my husband was at work, my stepson and I started watching a Netflix movie. I thought it was the perfect time to just go for it. He was laughing at one of the scenes and I just took his face and I kissed him. He jumped up and pushed me and said, whoa, why the f did you go and just do that? Then I said, I thought. He just ran to his room and called his dad. My heart sank. My husband left me and took his son and divorced me too. Now I'm currently dating and have no luck. And he's remarried with a beautiful family. I can't find a guy half what my ex-husband was. Don't be like me, appreciate Story time about my toxic ex-friend group. So my freshman year, I had moved to a new high school. So right away, I started being friends with this group of girls, and they were super nice, and I was also friends with this group of guys. Well, since I was friends with both groups, we all started hanging out all the time, but only whenever I was there. The boys just didn't want to hang out with the other girls. And after a few months, the girls started acting really strange. So anytime that I would hang out with the boys and not invite them, they would ignore me for a whole week. Meaning they wouldn't talk to me in school, they wouldn't answer my messages, or anything like that. Not a single one of them. And also, anytime that we hung out, they would be like, oh, invite the boys. And it was like they never wanted to hang out with me. So the one night, one of the boys was throwing a party. And I was going, and the girls asked if they could come, but they had drama with a lot of people, so the boys didn't want them coming, but I invited them anyways. Like for part two. Part two to the toxic ex-friend group story time. So, you know, I invited them to the party, they showed up, and they were being really rude and, like, standoffish the whole entire night. And these girls literally hated it whenever I would hang out with the boys or talk to the boys. Come to find out that every single one of the girls had a crush on every single one of the guys that were in my friend group. Also, I'm a very friendly person and will talk to anybody and they got pissed off whenever I was talking to anybody who wasn't them. So a little bit into the party, I start getting a lot of dirty looks from a lot of different girls that I've never even talked to. And this girl walks up to me and she's like, why have you been Snapchatting my boyfriend? And I'm like, girl, what are you talking about? She goes, a few of your friends told me that you like my boyfriend and that you've been Snapchatting him and trying to get with him. So then she calls the girls over from my friend group and goes, didn't she tell me this? And they're like, yeah, she tries to get with everybody's boyfriend. So after that, I got kicked out of both friend groups because they spread a bunch of lies and rumors about me. Story time about how my boyfriend cheated on me with a 17 year old girl. So when summer started, I started working at this new job and I had a really good connection with one of my coworkers and he was 28 years old. So we started talking, but I would get mad at him a lot because he would ignore my messages asking to hang out. And on top of that, every time that we got done with work, we would all go sit and eat, and he would sit next to this one girl. 
And by the way, she was 17. And I could see them flirting all the time. Well, finally, once summer ended, she moved away. And then I felt like I had a real chance to start dating him. So we started hanging out a lot and hooking up a lot. After a few months, I started taking our relationship serious. Well, apparently not for him because there was this girl on his phone that he had been texting a lot. So weirdly enough, after that, I get a DM from the girl that he would always flirt with at work. And she asked me if I was dating him. And I said, yeah. And then she goes, oh, well, he's been texting me a lot. So then I blocked her and went and hooked up with one of his friends that night, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend was cheating on me with a 17-year-old girl. So like I said, I hooked up with his friend that night, but I didn't tell him for a couple months because he would always say that we weren't dating, even though we were basically in a relationship. So we were doing really good until around Christmas time. So after he gave me my gifts, which was socks and a candle, he left for Massachusetts. I don't know if I said that right. And a month before this, I had unblocked the girl that he was flirting with. So weirdly enough, after he left, she DM'd me. Basically asking if I was still dating him again. And I was like, yeah, why? And she goes, hmm, well, I need to tell you something. He actually took my virginity. And he's been sending me a lot of gifts, like a record player and albums. And we've been talking on the phone every night. So when I confronted him about it, he said he felt bad for her because he took her virginity. So after that, I confessed to hooking up with his best friend and called him a child predator. Crazy story time about how I found my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So every year, my mom and stepdad would have a Christmas party and everyone from both sides of the family would come. And I also invited my boyfriend. And at this time, my boyfriend and I were both juniors in high school. So everybody came to the party and everything was going good. Well, like an hour into the party, all the adults were super drunk. So before we all opened gifts, I decided to help my mom clean up dinner. So while I'm washing the dishes, I look over and my aunt and boyfriend are talking a lot. And she started to get really touchy with him, but I didn't think anything of it because she was super drunk. So after I'm done cleaning up, we all start opening gifts. And my boyfriend goes up to my room to go get his phone off the charger. And after he went upstairs, my aunt was like, oh, I need to go throw up. So about 10 minutes goes past and my boyfriend's still up in the room grabbing his phone. So I went to check on him. And I walk upstairs to see my aunt and my boyfriend laying on my bed making out. Like for part two. Part two to how I caught my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So like I said, they are laying on my bed making out. Doors wide open. They don't even bother to shut the door. And both of their shirts are off. And I think I should just put in here, my aunt is like 28. She's on my stepdad's side. She's really young. So they look up and my aunt's just like drunk as fuck looking at me. And she's like, do you want to join? Like, bitch, what the fuck? So I'm just like shook. And I start screaming. Everybody rushes up the stairs. And my mom pushes me out of the way and sees my boyfriend and my aunt laying on my bed with their shirts off. So my mom starts screaming at everybody. So my mom calls the cops, says that an adult is touching an underage boy, and she calls his mom, tells her what happened. So my boyfriend and I broke up, so that spread around the whole school, and word got out that they actually started seeing each other. Crazy ass story time about how my best friend's parents walked in on me sleeping with my best friend's brothers. And yes, I said brothers. So my freshman year, I had became best friends with this girl. And she had two older, hot-ass brothers. One was in college, and one was a senior. Well, it was Christmas break, and her older brother from college was home. And my parents let me go with them to Florida for Christmas break. They had a super nice beach house, and I was sharing a room with my best friend. And the boys were sharing a room. And our room was connected because there was a bathroom in the middle. Well, my best friend got super sick the first, like, three days of the trip, so she didn't do anything with us. So I was hanging out with the boys all the time. Well, the one night we were on the deck and we started to play truth or dare. And one of them asked, would you sleep with us? And I said, yeah. So at around 3 a.m., I snuck into their room and things started to get real nasty. There are kids on this app, so just use your imagination. And things started to get really loud and we woke their parents up, like for part two. Part two. So we thought that we woke their parents up. And we heard someone walking up the stairs. So I ran into the bathroom, hid, and they asked if everything was okay. And I was just like, oh, I'm not feeling good. I think I caught whatever my best friend has. So they went back downstairs and we thought they went back to sleep. They were never asleep. So we decided to go onto the deck and finish the nastiness that we were doing. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, like we don't have to be that quiet now. Because their bedroom was in the front of the house and the porch was on the back of the house. 
and we were on the second floor and below that there was another porch with like a fire pit and everything and I could see below us well out of the corner of my eye I thought I saw somebody walk into the house but stupid me I just ignored it not even a minute later I hear the sliding door open and I hear <gasps> And we all turn around and everybody's standing there. So they sent me home and told my parents. But I didn't get grounded because low-key my mom knew I was a hoe. <laughs> Story time about how I tried to get my boyfriend back for cheating on me, but I ended up with an STD instead. So a little background information. I was dating this guy for about seven months whenever I was in high school. And I would always hang out with him, his guy friends, and their girlfriends. Well, the one night we were hanging out at my house and he kept checking my phone. And he said it was because he was waiting for his mom to text my phone. So then he had to go to the bathroom and he asked to take my phone with him. And I said no because that's weird as fuck. So while he's in the bathroom, I get a text from a random number. And it's a bunch of videos that my boyfriend took of him doing the nasty with other girls. And there were like 15 videos, all different girls. So by this time he's been in the bathroom for like 15 minutes. So I go to confront him while he's in the bathroom. Like I do not care at this point. And he's gone. My bathroom window is wide open. My curtains are broken. So then I start to text all of his best friends. Like for part two. Part two. So it turns out the person who sent it to me was one of the girls in my friend group. So at that point, every single person in that friend group was dead to me and I needed to get every single one of them back. So like I said, I started texting all my ex's best friends and I asked every single one of them if they wanted to hook up. Four of them said yes, the other three just blocked me. And the four who said yes all had girlfriends in our friend group. Well, the girls in my friend group had no idea, so they invited me to their party. And at that party, it was my mission to do the dirty with every single one of those guys. Well, there was this bathroom in the basement, which nobody knew about except the girl whose house it was. So one after the other, I did the dirty with every single one of them in that bathroom. And I made sure to snap a picture or take a video. So that way I could send it to my boyfriend. I know, I'm crazy, get over it. Well, in the morning, my ex's closest best friend came over. Well, I did the dirty with him too, because my ex hated him being around me, because he was known for screwing other people's girlfriends. Okay, there's gonna be a part three. Part three. So a week later, I started having some problems down there. So I had my mom take me to the doctor's. Turns out I have a fucking STD. And nobody knew about it, at least not yet. Well, my boyfriend came over that same day asking if we could get back together. So I thought, what an even better way to get back at him. Give him what I have. Mind you, I was still hooking up with all four of his best friends. And then like two weeks later, my boyfriend started talking to me about how he was also having problems down there. And I was like, oh, maybe you should go to the doctors. So after he went to the doctors, he texts me and he goes, yeah, I have an STD. So then I sent him all the videos of his best friends and I, and I said, yeah, I hope you enjoy living with that for the rest of your life. And I also gave it to all of his friends and then they spread it to their girlfriends. Payback's a bitch. Story time about how my boyfriend was cheating on me with my stepsister. So a little background information, my mom remarried whenever I was in 8th grade, and my stepdad had two daughters, one which was my age, and we got along really well. Well, before my sisters and I went back to school, my mom wanted to go on a camping trip with everyone, and my boyfriend was coming because he was really close with my family. So while my stepsister and I are packing up, she starts acting really weird, and we're gonna call my boyfriend Kevin. She was like, oh, is Kevin still coming with us? And I was like, yeah. And then she goes, oh, are you and Kevin still together? And I'm like, we were never broken up, like the fuck? Like I said, she was just being super fucking weird. But anyways, we all get in the car, we drive up there, and her and Kevin start being super weird around each other. Like they were being too touchy. Anytime that I wanted to go do something with Kevin, she would say, oh, Kevin, you can come do this instead. Well, that night, Kevin and I are sleeping in our tent. At least I thought he was. And I wake up to some loud noises in the other tent, like for part two. Part two. So like I said, I heard a bunch of noises and talking in my stepsister's tent and I wake up and my boyfriend isn't in the tent. So I'd be very quiet getting out of my tent and I go over to hers and I just listen. And oh bitch, I should have just confronted them because I got my motherfucking feelings hurt. He was telling her how he didn't love me at all and how he only wanted to be with her and how every time that they kissed each other and screwed each other, he felt such a connection between them. So not only was he cheating physically, but they had a connection. Wonderful. So I open her tent and I confront them. This was the most degrading thing I've ever went through in my life. 
And I said, I heard you guys outside. And I'm just not the type of girl who's going to come at another girl because my man wants her. Because at that point, he's not my man. She goes, sit down, sweetie. We need to talk. Apparently, they're in love. So they started dating. They're still dating. And my parents allowed it. So I distanced myself from all of them. Story time about how I woke up to my best friend having a seizure. A little background information. So my close friend invited me over to his house to spend the night. And we're gonna call him Jay. Well, Jay and I got to his house and his parents were really strict so he had to sneak me in. So he told me to wait by the garage. And as soon as he opens the front door to his house, I hear his parents screaming. So he's inside fighting with his parents. I'm outside freezing my ass off. So an hour later, he comes out to get me, walks me through the garage, and I have to hide in this crawl space. So while I'm hiding in this crawl space, him and his parents are still arguing. And his parents walk past where I was like five times. So his mom gets in the car and leaves. She said she was going to kill herself. His dad comes into the garage, starts crying. I literally witness him have a mental fucking breakdown. Then his mom came back, said that she hated everybody. So then Jay purposely bangs his head off of the kitchen table two times. So when he came into the garage to get me, he had an ice pack on his head. Then we snuck up to his room like for part two. Part two. So like I said, he rushes me up to his room because his dad was in the basement and his mom left again, threatening to kill herself again. And while we're upstairs, he starts taking dabs and we're up for a little bit and then we go to sleep. So at like 8 in the morning, we both wake up. He's on his phone, I'm on my phone, we're not facing each other. And then all of a sudden, I feel the bed start to shake, like a lot. So I turn over and this kid is having a full-blown fucking seizure. Like he's foaming at the mouth, his eyes are literally rolling in the back of his fucking head. So I get up and roll him over onto his side because I didn't want him to start choking. And I'm fucking freaking out and don't know what to do because I wasn't even supposed to be there in the first place. And he's like making all these types of noises. So I go and I run down the hallway. I try to find his parents' room and I open the door and have to wake them up dead out of their sleep. And I was like, um, your son's having a seizure. So his mom runs over to the room and his dad's like, well, who the fuck are you? And why the fuck are you in my house? And I was like, your son told me that I could stay the night last night. Oh, like for part three. Part three. So like I said, his dad's like interrogating me right now. So they call an ambulance. His son leaves in the ambulance. They didn't go with him. And his dad's like, you're never allowed in this fucking house again. And then he asked me, did he take anything last night? And I'm like, he did dabs, but like, I didn't do anything because I don't do that stuff. So he goes over to where all of his dab stuff is and starts throwing the glass pieces in the garbage, making sure that he fucking breaks them all. And his mom comes over to me to comfort me because I'm literally like fucking crying because this kid almost died right next to me. And she's like, it's okay, sweetie. Like this happens to him a lot. But I felt so uncomfortable because he was like making it seem like it was my fault. So I hurry up and call my mom and my mom doesn't get there till like 30 minutes because their house is a little bit further away. And for all of you wondering what happened to him, I don't know because this happened this morning. Story time about how I broke up my best friend and his girlfriend. So it was our sophomore year in high school, and my best friend and I had known each other since we were like eight years old. And I've always had a crush on him, like anytime he would get a girlfriend, I would try and break them up. And it would work. Well, our freshman year of high school, he started dating this one girl. Well, when he started dating her, he distanced himself from me. Because she didn't like how much time we were spending together. So a few months go by, and my birthday's coming up. And mind you, within these past few months, we only seen each other like twice. And he had me blocked on all social media. Well, our parents were really good friends because we lived in the same cul-de-sac. So my mom invited him and his parents to my birthday party. So at the end of my party, my friends left, and him and his parents stayed. And my parents really didn't care if I drank alcohol, so we had like a whole bottle of vodka to ourselves. So we're in the basement and we're taking shots together. Well, I got him super drunk and he fell asleep. And while he was sleeping, I went on his phone and like for part two. Part two. And I was able to get into his phone because he sold my fingerprint from when we were best friends. So I unblocked myself on all social medias. And there was an ottoman pushed against the couch. So while he was sleeping, I was able to go lay next to him. So while I was laying next to him, I took a few pictures of us. And I saved them in his camera roll. And I also sent one to his girlfriend. And it was about 1 in the morning. Well, she opened it right away and then she started going off and would not stop calling his phone. So after that, I turned his phone off. So he started to wake up and then we started drinking more. And then we started fooling around. And while we were doing the nasty, I took a video. But he didn't see it because the phone was in front of me. 
and I had his girlfriend on Snapchat. So what did I do? I sent the motherfucking video to her. So the next day, obviously, he found out what happened. So then he came over to my house to talk to me, and I told him how I was upset that she was keeping him from me. So he broke up with her and started dating me. Story time about how I found out that my boyfriend was trying to get with another girl on Valentine's Day. Okay, there's a lot that goes into this story time, so let me break it down for you real quick. I was a sophomore, and my boyfriend and I had been dating for about four months now. And he was a junior. Well, there was this girl that he was for some reason obsessed with in his Spanish class. She was a freshman. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, well, how did you know he was obsessed with her? Well, he would Snapchat this girl 24-7. Even his friends told me he was obsessed with her. So I talked to him and I told him I was uncomfortable with how much he was talking to this girl. And he said, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'll block her. Now, I didn't ask him to do that, but it made me feel more confident in how he felt about me. Well, Valentine's Day comes around. And we didn't talk all day until he came to pick me up. I wished him a happy Valentine's Day and got left on delivered. So we get to the restaurants and we decide to put our phones at the end of the table so that way we would be more focused on each other. Well, he goes to the bathroom and then I see this name pop up on his phone. Like for part two. Part two. So like I said, I saw this name on his phone and there was something special about this name. So whenever I kept streaks, I would put the word streak and then an emoji and then the person's name. And he got the idea that instead of keeping her name, he would put it as streak. So I was like, that's really fucking weird. And at first I was like, what the fuck? So I opened his phone and what do you know? It's from that girl. And she was replying back to a big paragraph that he sent her. And we had school that same day. So at 6.30 in the morning, this girl got a big paragraph from my boyfriend about how she's such a beautiful, amazing girl and that she deserves somebody who's gonna take her out and buy her flowers and stuff. And how if she wanted to go out to dinner, let him know. He took an extremely long time in the bathroom, so the waiter came to our table. So I ordered $300 worth of food for myself. So when he came back, I told him that I had to go call my mom, and I left. And he was stuck with a $400 bill. Story time about my worst trip off LSD. So one of the kids in my friend group was about to leave for Arizona. And we would always talk about how we need to trip together before he leaves. And anytime that I would trip off acid, I would go to my one plug. Well, he ran out, so we had to go to somebody else. And I've never tried this kid's stuff before. But I just said, fuck it, YOLO. Which should not have been my motto at the time. But it was. So that night, we're in the car and one of our friends is driving because he's sober, obviously. And before I put the tab on my tongue, I started to get really nervous. And I have never felt like that before I've taken acid. But I kind of just said, fuck it, and I put it on my tongue. So we go pick up two more people that I'm not really close with. So then we make our way over to our other friend's apartment. And I'm kind of feeling it, but not really. But then as soon as we walk into that apartment, I start tripping balls. And you know, everything was going good. But then my dumb ass decided to look in the fucking mirror. And as soon as I look in the mirror, I see myself smile back at me. Like for part two. Okay, part two. So like I said, I look in the mirror and I see myself smiling back at me. And that's whenever everything went south so quick. I sat on the bed, tried to pull myself together because I didn't want to make a fucking scene in front of everybody. But then I got caught in this fucking loop. And if you don't know what the loop is, then I'm going to tell you what it is. It's basically where you feel like you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And then I started looking around at everybody and it looked like their faces were melting. One of my friends got up off his chair, walked to the other side of the room, and I watched him do that. But when I looked back over at the fucking chair, he was still sitting there. So I looked at my one friend that was sober, who I was actually really close with, and I think he saw the look in my eye and he was like, do you want to leave now? And I just shook my head, yeah, like I could not deal with that shit anymore. So we go to his car and then we drive to my boyfriend's house. Because I could not go home, I would have got crucified. But we get in the house and as soon as his mom sees me, she knows that something's wrong. Like for part three... Okay, part three. So like I said, I walked in and she knew that something was wrong with me right away because she was like, oh, I have a letter from your boyfriend. And usually I would run up, grab it, read it really quickly because I would only get like one letter a week. But instead I ran downstairs because her face was fucking melting. So five minutes later, she has to come downstairs and help me get dressed in my pajamas because I forgot how to dress myself. I didn't want to be left alone that night. So my friend stayed in the basement with me. So he went and tried to go to sleep. But he couldn't because I was watching Butterfly Effect for eight hours straight. Like, that was the only thing that could calm me down. But I still don't even know all the freaking words to it, which is weird. Like, he would try to change the video and somehow I end up back to Butterfly Effect. 
And then he tried to kiss me. So he left the next morning because he had to go to work, which was at like 11 a.m. And I took this tab at 8 p.m. the day before. So I was getting texts like, where are you? You're supposed to be home now. So I had to go home and act normal in front of everybody while I'm still tripping balls. And I also got grounded for coming home late because I could not come home at the right time because I was tripping so hard. And this lasted for about 24 hours. Story time about how I caught my boyfriend cheating on me and I got him arrested. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. My boyfriend and I have only been together for two months. I'm gonna call him Rex. We live in a pretty small town and everybody knows that Rex is a player. He asked me out and I said yes because I always had a crush on him. After a few dates, he asked me to be his girlfriend. I said yes under the condition that he was totally monogamous. And he said, of course. A few weeks into the relationship, I noticed that he was always hiding his phone from me. And whenever he would put his phone on a table, he would flip the screen side down. Of course, this had me on high alert. One night we went out with friends and I made sure that he got super drunk. I took advantage and went through all of his Instagram DMs. And of course he had been talking to about 30 girls. And I knew some of these girls and they knew that we were together. He had even set up a date with one of the girls for the following day at a bar. And you better believe that I was going to catch him red-handed. I show up to the bar and I don't see them. I go back to the parking lot and there he is in his car making out with this girl. I knock on the window. Part 2 is up. My boyfriend is in his car making out with another girl. I caught them red-handed. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. My boyfriend Rex quickly puts on his shirt and the other girl puts on her shirt too. I try to open the door, but it's locked. And to my surprise, my boyfriend gets mad at me and asks me what I'm doing there. So of course I say to him, what are you doing here? That's when he finally gets out of the car and he tells the other girl to stay in the car. I told him that he had promised to be monogamous. That's when he said that I was crazy and that he had never promised that and that he had no intention to be serious with me. Then he said that I made that entire conversation up in my head. And then he told me to leave. I was so shocked. I couldn't believe what he had just said to me. The girl gets out of the car and she actually apologizes to me. And she told me that Rex had told her that he was single. Then Rex lunges at her, starts pulling her hair, and pushes her to the ground. Part 3 is up. My boyfriend lunges at the girl that I just caught him cheating on me with. He starts pulling her hair and pushes her to the ground. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. Try to get him to stop and I pulled his arm. Then he turns around and starts chasing me. I run back into the bar and two guys stop him. I called the cops right away and they came and arrested him. Later on that day, he asked me to bail him out and I said no. Everybody knows what he did. The other girl is trying to press charges and my dad wants me to get a restraining order. But I'm still in love with him and I don't want to get him in any more trouble. I even want to take him back. But I know I shouldn't, right? Story time about my horrible toxic ex. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My ex and I had been friends for three months. When he asked me out, I said yes because I really liked him. But the relationship only lasted one month. He started showing red flags really quick. He would constantly try to monopolize my time. If I told him that I couldn't hang out, he would show up to my house randomly without even asking if he could come over. It's like he was checking to see if I was telling the truth or not. Anytime I would be babysitting, he would also show up and ask to hang out. Obviously, I would say no because I was working. He also monitored all of my social media. If I posted anything about BLM, he would get so angry and he wouldn't talk to me. One day, I get a text from him saying, I don't think this is going to work out anymore. He actually broke up with me over text. I was on a road trip with my family at the time, so I was so distracted and I I thought I'd be okay. A few days later, I find out he started dating my best friend. Then he started sending me abusive text messages. Part two is up. My ex started sending me abusive text messages, calling me an SLUT and saying that I was stupid. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I tried to reason with him, but he just wouldn't listen. Of course, I ended up blocking him. A few days later, he showed up at my house. I asked him why he was there. He said he was just riding his bike around. I didn't buy it for one second. He made it a habit of just showing up to my house on his bike. Then he started texting me from another number. He was constantly trying to get my attention. Of course, I blocked that number as well. And I get a message from my best friend who had started dating my ex when we broke up. She asked me if we could hang out and I said yes. We talked for a few hours and we made up. She explained to me how verbally abusive he was with her too and that he was stalking her as well. But guess what? It gets worse. On top of all of that, he called my sister and started telling her that I was too fat for him, that I was unattractive and that I didn't bring enough energy into the relationship and that that's why he broke up with me. That's when I called him and we got into a huge fight. Part three is a... Uh, my ex called my sister and told her that I was too fat for him and that I was unattractive and that's why he had to break up with me. That's when we got into a huge fight over the phone. Of course, we both said extremely hurtful things. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. That guy said he had been stalking me and sending me abusive text messages. I kept blocking him and he would keep coming back. Then again, he would show up at my house. His excuse was that he was riding his bike around my neighborhood. 
I told him I needed space. A few days later, I'm hanging out with my friends, and there he is. Shows up totally uninvited. Everyone knew what had happened, but he still tried to talk to me. Of course, I ignored him. A few hours later, I get a ton of notifications from Instagram. Guess what? It's my ex. He started begging for forgiveness. He was trying to justify every single thing he did. There was no excuse for his abusive behavior. Not to me or my best friend. I told him to leave me alone, but he still kept sending the messages. They're starting to get to me. I know I shouldn't want to be with him, but part of me still loves him. He's the first person I've ever fallen in love with. I don't know what to do. Story time about how I found out my sugar daddy was stalking me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I signed up to a sugar daddy website last year. I lost my job because of COVID. Just started my own small business and things were not going well. I also helped my parents out with money because I didn't want them to be working during COVID. I signed up to a website and instantly I started getting messages. One man stood out because he was very active and owned several businesses. I told him I didn't want to meet up because I just wasn't going to do that, but also because of COVID. He agreed to have a phone conversation with me and then eventually he offered me $5,000 a month. This was more than enough to help me and my parents out. After that, I was basically his online companion. He would text me and I would text back. We went out to dinner a few times, but because of COVID, we kept our distance. It was truly the perfect scenario for me. Then I noticed that he started to get really clingy. If I didn't text him back right away, he would get upset. One day, I got another message from the Sugar Daddy website. Another man was asking me to go out to dinner twice a week, and he wanted to pay me $1,000 for this. So I said, of course. When I told Sugar Daddy number one that I'd be busy two days out of the week, he got really mad and asked me where I lived. I told him I couldn't tell him part to his up. That's when my Sugar Daddy asked me where I lived. I was not about to tell him where I lived. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I told him I couldn't tell him. And he got really upset and offered me $2,000 more, which means that he would be paying me $7,000 a month. Then he said that he didn't want me to be with any other sugar daddies. At this point, I hadn't even told him that I was approached by another sugar daddy. So how did he know that I was talking to another one? I accepted his offer of $7,000 a month, but this only made him even worse. He would call me all the time and ask me where I was. And he would constantly ask me where I lived. He noticed a change in me and that's when he offered to buy me a car, a Mercedes to be exact. I didn't know if I should accept or not because I knew it would make him feel like he had more ownership over me. I told him that I wasn't sure if I should accept the car because of his behavior. Then he said that he would buy me my own apartment. I felt really creeped out so I decided not to answer his phones or his messages the rest of the night. Two hours later, I'm laying in bed and I hear a really hard knock at my door. It was him. Part three is my sugar daddy starts banging on my front door. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. And he didn't know where I lived. I look through the peephole and I tell him to leave. That's when he shows me a wad of cash. He tells me I can keep it with no strings attached. I said no, and that's when he started calling me names. He started yelling really loud. I was hoping my neighbors would hear and call the cops. In order to calm him down, I opened the door and I let him in. Big mistake. He asked to use my bathroom and that's when I grabbed his phone. I saw on his camera roll that he had pictures and video of me. He'd been following me around for months. He started calling the cops, but that's when he came out of the bathroom. I asked if he could stay over and I said yes. I was so scared. We're supposed to have dinner tonight. The cops said they can't help because he hasn't hurt. Part 4. I checked my sugar daddy's cell phone. There were so many pictures and videos of me which means he had been following me around for months. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I told him I was sick and he had to sleep on the couch. The following day, he left my apartment really early so I called the police and I told him everything. They told me they can't do anything because he hasn't physically hurt me yet. My sugar daddy asked me out for dinner and I had to say yes just to act like everything was normal. At dinner, he acted completely normal like he hadn't showed up to my apartment the night before and yelled at me. That's when he offered me more money and the new apartment again. I told him I just couldn't accept it. Then I confronted him about the pictures and video on his cell phone. Of course, he denied everything. I asked to see his phone and he handed it to me. And of course, he had deleted all the evidence. So now it's just my word against his. Then he handed me keys to my new car. It's a beautiful car. I don't even know if I should accept it or not. Should I get a restraining order? I don't know what to do. Story time about how I caught my dad doing the dirty with my best friend. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My mom and dad have been married for 30 years. My dad started modeling when he was really young and he still does it to this day. Every single time that I would bring a friend over to my house, they would always talk about how cute my dad is. It never annoyed me at all because I was so proud of my dad, but it really bothered my mom. So out of respect for my mom, I would just tell my friends not to say anything. My mom is definitely the jealous type. My best friend and I have known each other for about three years. She was the new girl at school and we became friends and ever since then we've been inseparable. She always comes over to my house, we have sleepovers and my family really likes her. My mom even takes her shopping with us and buys her tons of stuff. She always comes with us to get manicures and pedicures and facials as well. A few years ago, my mom told me that my dad was unfaithful to her and it really upset me. Basically, my mom couldn't trust him at all. And ever since then, I've kept an eye on him as well. One day I came home early from work. I see my best friend sitting on the couch with my dad. She was kissing his neck. When they saw me, they got up from the couch part to 
I see my best friend kissing my dad on the neck. And when they both saw me, they jumped off the couch right away. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My best friend said, oh, you're finally home. And my dad literally just walked toward the kitchen like nothing had happened. My best friend walks toward me to give me a hug, but I stop her straight in her tracks. I asked her why she was kissing my dad's neck. She laughs and said, of course I wasn't. And then I said, I just saw it. And she said that she was just thanking him for all the stuff my mom and dad do for her. Right, I was not buying it. My dad didn't even look me in the eyes after that. I decided not to question her any further, but I was really angry with my best friend. After that, I was totally convinced that there was something going on between them. So I decided to set a trap. I told my mom and dad I would be at work all day and that I would be home really late. And I told my best friend the same thing and that I wouldn't be able to hang out with her. I knew that my mom would be at work all day, which meant that my dad had the house all to himself. I said bye to my dad, but I sneaked back into the house and hid in my room all day. Then I started hearing voices. It sounded just like my best friend. I opened my dad's bedroom door and there they are on the bed doing the dirty. Disgusting. Part three is up. I walk in on my dad and my best friend doing the dirty. They had no clothes on and they were doing it in my mom's bed. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Because I am so intelligent, I recorded the whole thing on my phone. My father had the audacity to yell at me and tell me to get out of the room. I said, no way. Best friend starts dressing herself frantically, begging me for forgiveness. Then my dad tells her to keep her mouth shut. Well, I don't hesitate for one second and I send my mom the video that I just recorded. My dad pulls the phone away from me and throws it at the wall. Then he starts trying to negotiate with me. He said, if you don't tell your mom, I will never do this again, I promise. I told my best friend to go downstairs and wait for me on the couch. My dad starts putting on his clothes and by the time he's done, my mom is home. Of course, my mom went off on my best friend telling her how ungrateful she was. She asked my dad for a divorce. A few days later, I get a message from another friend. She tells me that she also did that with my dad. Since then, four other women have told me the same thing. They all go to college with me, so none of them are underage, thank God. My dad is begging my mom back, but she doesn't know what to do. We're both just in shock.